Oh, yeah. Woo. Oh, yeah. Drum Brigade Podcast. We are here. We are back. We took a week off, Funky Phil. Yes, we did. Oh, yeah. I got sick. You did? Yeah, I was sick. Aww. I know. I'm sorry, Phil. Where's my soup? <laughs> uh, we are back. We are back. What is this? Episode 24? I, I believe so. Know. Yeah, I believe it's episode 24. Man, we're killing it. Killing the game. Uh, we're back here in the Beat Locker in beautiful San Diego, California. I am Corey Kingston. Across from me, producing the show, holding it down, twisting knobs, pressing buttons, is fantastic, filthy, Funky Phil Pardell. What's going on, Funky Phil? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was a real audience. Yeah. <laughs> we just had a vegan, a Corey Kingston vegan parfait. Dude, that was good. It's bomb. <laughs> I feel like a billion dollars. <laughs> Some good stuff in that mug. Yeah. Um, and we're just here, man. It's just me and you. It's the last show of the year, Funky Phil. It's been a good year. It's been a good year. It's been a real good year. Next year's going to be way better, though. Oh, we're going to get into it. Oh, we're going to get into <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> before we get started and before we just, you know, take on this, this show, first of all, this show is just me and you today. There is no guest. I think, yeah. yeah. Or, well, maybe. There Unless, might be a guest. Yeah. But no phone guest today. Yeah. Which is going to lead to my soapbox inevitably, but it's all right. <laughs> no guest. It's cool. We can handle this show all day by ourselves. Heck we don't yes. need you fools. Uh-uh. <laughs> um, so we're going to just, we're just going to ride solo today. It's just going to be Funky Phil and Corey Kingston talking about life. Yeah. And chicks. Just kidding. <laughs> chicks. <laughs> uh, Drum Brigade show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, TuneIn, DrumBrigade.com, YouTube, soon to be Spotify, Spotify and Patreon. <laughs> dang Dude, it. I have dropped the ball. I've been too dang busy. I haven't been feeling good. Mm. That's why I had a vegan parfait to like lift me up today. So it's coming. I didn't get to it like two weeks ago, last week. No, two weeks ago or last week. I will get to it. I promise. We got a lot of things like changing in the new year. Um, so we'll work on that. Uh, we have a YouTube. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, both Phil and I have like YouTube pages that you could subscribe to. And then we also have a Drum Brigade YouTube page that has obviously this show, audio only. Um and interviews and lessons and reviews and all kinds of stuff. We will, we're working like constantly on getting more and more stuff. So, or more content. So we'll keep working on that. You keep working on pressing that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. uh, Drum Brigade is a community, a family, a place for drummers, drum enthusiasts, future drummers, and people who are just playing into music and culture to be among like-minded individuals. Drum Brigade is a way to support each other as fellow drummers. Also, it means to push each other to excel and expand horizons in a spirit of camaraderie rather than negative competition. I hate negative competition. Me too. Beat it. If you are trying to compete with me just because I'm a drummer, beat it. <laughs> this is all about camaraderie. <laughs> uh, we have Drum Brigade products like drumsticks, t-shirts, stickers. Um, we have educational stuff, lessons, videos. We do product reviews. We have a podcast. We have um, like a web show, season one, and then we're going to be working on season two very soon here. Um, we have be at NAM, right? Oh, well, yeah, we're going to do some. Yeah, we're going to do a lot of interviews at NAM. It's going to be cool. Man, now that we've said it, we have to do it. It's going Can't on. Can't get scared. Can't get scared. If you see like John <sighs> Robinson walk by, you better just be like, yo, John, can we grab an interview? Yeah. And if he's like, no, then be like, we're in a spirit of camaraderie rather than negative competition. <laughs> Beat it, John Robinson. You're not part of the brigade. Yeah, I don't want your signature snare anymore that I got in the 90s. That is a sweet drum, though. Yeah. I, I messed that up. I'll have to talk about that later, but I messed that drum up, dude. No. Oh, man. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Did you, like, put... <sighs> Did you like grind the bearing edges down or something? What'd you do? No. Oh, we'll get into it later. Let's get into it later. <laughs> um, Drum Brigade is the Brotherhood of Drums. Are you part of the Brotherhood of Drums, Funky Phil? You know it. I am too. Let's get into it. <laughs> Oh my 
gosh. <laughs> I feel good today, man. Me too. I got some like like yorba mate tea. Whew. You got some coffee. Yeah. We just we had a, a vegan parfait and I had some toast with peanut butter and bananas. What was that yogurt made out of? Cashews. Cashew yogurt. <clears throat> yeah, we had cashew yogurt. All right, let me break it down for you, you people. You this chop is a recipe. Up. Get get your pencil yeah, and yeah. some paper. This is Corey's parfait <laughs> recipe for vegan Corey Funk Kingston Corey's <laughs> vegan parfait. parfait. It's my breakfast. It's my breakfast of champions. It's what I like pretty much eat every day. All right, you start with a chopped up banana. Put some granola in that mug mm. on top. Then you put some almonds. Then oh. I put some sunflower seeds. Not no. Sorry, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds. That was close. Not with the shell. They're shelled pumpkin seeds. Yeah. Very important. Chia seeds. Blueberries. Whew. MCT oil. What is that? MCT oil. Yeah. Um, and then yogurt. Wait, what's that oil? It's like, it's good for you. <laughs> It like helps your like your metabolism speed up, I think, and like it it it's good fat, you know. Okay, cool. And then uh, what I said, chia seeds, and then uh, vegan yogurt, and then you mix that all together. You can put a little sugar if you want, like if you're using like S- specifically Colombian sugar. Colombian sugar is what we use today. <laughs> not yeah, that and not kind what of you're sugar. thinking. <laughs> I came in and was like, Phil was like, uh, you want some of this Colombian sugar? And I'm like, uh, Phil, where have you been? <laughs> like, you're going to get arrested. No, it's not that kind of Colombian sugar. Uh, although it is sweet. <laughs> um, and then you mix that mug up and you eat it and it is crunchy, milky goodness. And it's vegan and it gives you so much energy. I feel really good. Yeah. It just messes. It's going to be the most positive show ever. Speaking of which, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Um, so yeah, uh, okay. Let's talk about this John Robinson snare before I forget. Okay. Okay. So I bought this snare. This was like I got this snare when I was probably like fifteen. I started. I was starting to play a lot of gigs, and so my dad was just like, "All right, it's time to get some real equipment that you because like you're playing a lot of pro like professional gigs and." You can't be playing with like janky stuff. Took me to Guitar Center and said, "Which snare do you want?" So I went right to the the Dennis Chambers snare. But you got to remember, this is in like 1994, 95. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I can't be playing with a deep snare. Like you got to think about it. Like what's that band? Um, Spin Doctors were popular. Three Eleven was popular. <laughs> It was there was a lot of snappy tight like snare drums. Piccolo, the piccolo sound was in, dude. It was, yeah, yeah. So, like, I was like, I can't be having this deep, like, what is the Dennis Chamber snare, like six fourteen by six or something or something like that, six and a half maybe. I was like, that. How does he get that snare drum sound with that deep snare? Well, I didn't know Dennis Chambers was just like tuning the crap out of his snare. So. I naturally went to the John Robinson piccolo snare and was like, this is my steez piccolo. Yeah. It's a three, I think three or three and a half by 14. Oh, I thought you had the, um, no, I have the nineties one, the OG maple one. Oh, wait, the pearl. And it is pearl. Ladies and gentlemen. What? Yeah. Made by pearl. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the Yamaha one. Nope. John Robinson Pearl Snare. What? I yes. didn't even know that existed. Yeah. This is a piccolo? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. John Robinson Maple Natural Finish High Gloss Piccolo Snare. Oh, man. I'm Googling. Okay. So I, I see it. I see it. I played that snare drum for years, years and years and years until I got the snare drum that I play like exclusively. Well, not anymore, but we'll get into that also later. Um, I got my Thomas snare right after that. And then I used that for like all the reggae albums and stuff. Mm. So I had two snares for a long time. John Robinson, Tama, copper. Is it copper? It's not copper. Maybe. I don't know. Bronze. No, copper. Brass? Maybe it's bronze, not brass. I don't remember now. Dang it. All right. Well, anyways. Have to get it out of the closet. Yeah. So this is what happened with the John Robinson snare. I tuned it. I played it for years and years and years and years. And 
I used to tune it down. I used to tune it loose, but mostly like really tune it up. Like, so I can sound like 311 and crank and spin it. doctors. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the lugs stripped out and fell off. Uh Oh, yes. <laughs> and so, I mean, this is, we're talking about years, what, 25 years. Uh, I never found it again. I lost it. It's gone. I still don't have the lug on my, on the snare. What? It's gone. It's gone. Really? So then I was like, well, I'll just like, oh, I really want to fix that snare because I was like only using one snare for years. Even now I was still using the same snare. I have like 10 snares and I still only use one until now. Okay. Well, anyways, I got this snare drum. It has no lug. I can't use it. So I'm like, I email, um, Pearl. Yeah, sorry, no, we don't have it. I talked to Pearl at Nam. Hey, I have this snare drum. I just want to get one of those lugs. No, I can't. Yeah, no, we don't have it. Oh, so this is where your hatred for Pearl comes from. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, well, throughout the years, I've talked, I've gone to drum swap meets. Hey, man, I'm looking for this specific lug. Do you have any? I probably can find it online now, but like, still, never found the lug throughout history of me playing drums. So that's one. Two, I think, what did I do? I don't remember, but at a time, there was a time where I was endorsed by Battlefield Drums. Mm. Okay. And I was good friends with their previous owner. He was a great dude. He was a super nice guy. Um, anyways, the throw-off stripped. Throw-off stripped on that drum. A lot of things were stripping out and breaking on that snare drum. Dang. You wonder why I hate Pearl. How long did you have it, though? I've had this snare drum for years. Like, yeah. it's my first real snare drum. Um, Sounds like it had a good long, got, got a lot of service. But I mean, still. I played a lot of gigs with it, but, you know, it's just, I mean, I've also had this other snare for maybe a few years less, and it's nothing has ever broken on it, ever. It's true. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the, the, the throw-off strips out, it's unusable. Ugh. So I don't know, you know, this is like kind of before you could just Google something. So I don't know what to do. So I go, Hey man, I have a snare drum where the throw off is broken. This is back when you had to like send letters with like birds and mm, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. When I was playing battleful drums was years ago. Like, you like penned that letter with a feather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <Like it. laughs> yes. So I hit up my buddy at battlefield and I say, Hey, I have this throw off that's messed up. And he's like, well, I can throw on one of our throw offs on there. And I said, yes. And he drilled holes into this shell and put a janky uh -oh. new throw off on this snare. And so now this snare has lost its, its authenticity because yeah. now it would probably be like a collector's. I would like an original one, but you could get one for 200 bucks. Oh, uh, really? On reverb right now. Okay. Well, 200, 209.99. I mean, yeah. The problem is if I got one of those those throw offs and put it back on there, now I have like random holes in my snare drum. Mm -hmm. And then I think he drilled two more vents in there too. Oh, it's just oh the so age dumb. of vented drums. So dumb. So dumb. So dumb. So dumb. And I still haven't found that lug, so that snare is just unusable. But I still will keep that snare forever. This one looks clean. You should buy it. I don't have two hundred dollars. <laughs> and Phil <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> well, I just got a uh, new snare. Yay. Yay. Oh, yeah. Is that the trash talk? Oh, yes. Oh, man. So that kind of makes it? it better. It's in my car. I thought you were going to have it on this table for the entire episode, like yeah. right in front of me. I mean, we can check it out. Like, <laughs> I want to see it. I'm pretty stoked on this thing. I'm pretty stoked on this so thing. So now you're part of the Aluminum Snare Club. Yeah. The Illuminati Snare Drum. <laughs> the Illuminati <laughs> <laughs> Snare Drum. <laughs> um, <laughs> or Aluminium. Aluminium. As they say. Um, why do they say that? <laughs> I've gotten into an argument with a, with a British guy before. Like, it's not aluminum, it's aluminum. And he's like, we're the one who spawned the language, all right? Uh, okay, so I got this trash talk. This thing is dope, Funky Phil. Dope. Yeah. Now I'm talking to somebody who also owns 
an aluminum snare drum, right? I guess I have two. Two? Yeah, isn't the superphonic aluminum? Oh, yeah. That's what this one's molded off I of. I have a superphonic, and I've got my, my big boy, yeah. my vessel. Yeah. That thing. Very- Don't even get me started. That <laughs> drum is, I've used it. I was so happy with it this week. <laughs> I get so many compliments. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I love the way that snare drum sounds and feels. It has a very, like, the sizes are really cool. A yeah. very, like, round feel to it. Um, like very warm. Um, this one is similar. Uh, it's shallower though. It's a thinner shell too. Right? Thinner shell. Yeah. Um, so it's very light. It's it's very like I'm kind of it, I'm kind of afraid of like throwing it around. <laughs> like it feels mm-hmm. like fragile. Um, but it's man, it's great. It's friggin' It's I fell in love with it yesterday. So I played three gigs with it, kind of. Um. Like two and a half gigs with it. That's another story. I'll, when we talk about our gigs, I'll let you know what happened on that. Man, I have. I feel like I have so much things to talk about. So many things to talk about. Um, that's why we don't have a guest, I guess, because we we need we need Phil and I need to catch up. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So this thing, play the first gig with it. I like. I I was leaving for my gig. I was I was coming home, getting dressed, and then running out the door to my gig. And I come home. And there's a box at my door and I'm like, Oh Oh. yeah. And so I like literally just broke open the box and set this thing up and started tuning it. And I was just like, Oh yeah, I can't wait. Oh man, I'm taking this to the gig. And then I took it to the gig. Some stuff happened where we didn't actually play the gig. (laughs) No. (laughs) And then we like, like, Okay, and then I like I played a gig the next day, but it was very quiet, very very quiet. And I was playing the stupid odory drums. What you didn't use your your new one for that? No, I used I used um, the snare. Okay, but it was still like it had a it had a Remo head on there, mm. like a control sound or something. I don't know what it's called, but I don't. It wasn't it wasn't me. It was a good head. It was wasn't me. So I took that mug off and I put an Aquarian uh, response to on there. Sweet. Cranked it the heck down (laughs) and then played like a pop gig. And I was like, huh? Hmm. Not quite sure about this yet. Uh I think it was too cranked and it was a super extremely loud gig. Cranked low. You mean you tuned it low or high? I'm confused. I cranked cranked it down. down. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry, when you said low, I thought you meant like you tuned it low. No, no, no. Like I cranked it like pretty much as tight as I can go. Okay. So, so you're going for that nineties sound. Yeah. Like but then I put like a bunch of true tones on there and like make it sound like kind of poppy, but it mm-hmm. was I went a little bit too hard. Okay, so then the next day I played another gig and it was like I was like in between that and whew. Good man. Responsive. You do like, I could play like jazz tune and like roll on that mug and it's like very responsive. And then I can play like some pop tunes and it's like, it's a great snare, man. Aluminum is a great snare to go, way to go. Yeah. I really like, aluminum drums sound so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, uh, but you know what? Like I really liked your snare drum too. Like when we played, when we did it last season on the show. I was like kind of blown away. I didn't, I had like, I didn't expect much, but I was just like, dude, this thing is like warm and like responsive. And I like the dimensions of yours, which is kind of crazy because they made a Masters of Maple made another one too that's like a, a 14 by eight, I think, or 14 by seven. Mm. Maybe eight, maybe seven. I don't know. Um, yeah. And I was going to get that one, but I'm, I'm glad I went with this one. I don't think I'll be playing any ska gigs with this one. It doesn't yeah, it's ring. Not, not that kind of drum. Yeah, he, he was like, "No, this thing will ring, man. It'll crank. It'll crank down, and it'll sound good." And but I think this is my versatile like LDB pop gig, jazz gig snare drum, and um, my snare, my ska snare drum is my ska snare drum. Yeah. So super stoked on that. Oh man, so stoked on that. Um. All right, Funky Phil, how was your week? I know I've been rambling on about snare drums, so like they're just kicking this show off like you know, without delay, but 
<laughs> uh, how was your week? Um, two weeks. Good, Playing man. gigs, getting any new stuff? I didn't get any new stuff. I just been I've been playing gigs and it's been fun. I've, I've tried some new moves. Moves? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, not <laughs> dancing like, now. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. Um, I've been. I've been. So I I got that overhead mic recently. Oh yeah. Um, which kind of is a game changer for if you do in ears. Ah. Even if the sound guy isn't going to use it, you can have. Because, like, a lot of, you know, a lot of gigs, you you pretty much just have a kick mic on it. So, wait. I got a question. Huh? So, wait. You, okay. Okay, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do, I with one of the groups, or a couple of the groups I play with, the, the um, one of the guys in the band is, like, does all the sound with one of those QSC touch mix things, yes. you know? And those were super rad for a lot of reasons. But I'm playing can, with him tonight. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, but you can like do you can uh, do monitor mixes through your cell phone, like through your uh, iPhone or whatever. You just have to get shared access, and then um, like they whoever's controlling it can give you access to just your monitor mix. You know, ah. so you can mix everyone in your ears just Ooh. exactly how you want it and tweak things as you go along. I have that app. Why haven't I done that? It's a great idea. It's awesome. If you uh, if you ever yeah, the touch mix, that's like to me that's like oh, I'm amazing. Try that Even if you don't use in ears, just to be able to do cuz you know, sometimes you just want to hear one thing a little more or a little less here yeah. and there and as you as the night goes on, your ears get tired and you want to you know, your what you want to hear changes through yeah. through the gig. But um anyway, so I brought my overhead I was like, okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have my overhead and my kick, and then I'm gonna use in ears and not have a wedge, and play quieter, not crazy quiet, but like yeah. not. I just feel like you know a lot of times when everything else is going through a PA except for you, I yeah. feel like I always I'll like have to overcompensate. I'll be, yeah, I'll be like playing harder than I normally would just because I know. I have to to project enough to right. be balanced out in the audience. So this was rad because I just I could play at a like a, a more normal volume and I could do different things around the kit because you yeah. know I'm not slamming them so hard. But it was it was rad. That's I think I'm cool. gonna do that a lot more. So my question is, when you set up like that, yeah, how do you set up? Like, do you have them the front of house run the, the overhead instead of the tom mics? Or is that just for you? Oh, this was so. This was uh, this was at like a corporate event. This okay. was just like a private. So you party. used it. So like, I brought my own mic. I brought uh, okay. my own overhead, my own stand. Yeah, and my kick mic, and I just plugged them in to the board. And then, yeah, the guy mixing, who's in the band, put actually put my overhead in the mains too. I so, think I'm gonna do that. So I was like balanced with everybody out there better. Yeah. Um. And you know, it's 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 a lot less work than bringing a bunch of tom mics like yeah individual yeah. mics too but i wonder what there's the, different benefits to that but. we should get into one of these episodes on like a good setup like like having all the tom mic, like having a drum full drum kit setup and then running it to your own mixer and then running that to your to the front of house so they don't have to mix your drums like on a small i'm talking like n i'm not talking like if you're playing an arena or like house of blues or something yeah. i'm talking about like if you're playing a corporate gig or like a bar gig or something like that where they're not going to mic any of your drums but it will sound better if you do your own mix with your own reverb and all that stuff and then send that to the front of house and let them mix it and let them do it as one mix yeah well i've I think that would be a fun thing to get into with um, a, maybe a guest that's a sound person. Yeah. Because I feel, I don't know, but I feel like a lot of sound guys might be annoyed by that just because they won't have control over what the you know what they hear in the house. Well, that's so that's, if, you, if you're just sending them a left and right of all of your stuff. Yeah. They can't really turn your overhead down or turn up your kick or whatever. Well, that's what I'm saying though. Like, not a, you don't want to do that at a sound like a sound man type gig. But like, if you're playing like with the Schmucky Metals band at a wedding, yeah, they never mic my stuff. 
Oh, yeah. And then they don't want to make it loud, but you'll in turn be able to use like inners if you want and be able to play way quieter, but it's also going to sound balanced in the Because like, like you said, if everybody is plugged into this PA except for you, then you're overcompensating and playing like really loud to compete with like the piano player and the vocalist. Yeah. And then they have to turn up all the stage monitors yeah. louder to, so that people can be heard over you on yeah. stage. So it's like a vicious cycle of loudness. Yeah. But it, it can be controlled. But that what I did with that gig the other day where I had my own overhead like changed it. Like it I didn't I wasn't playing anywhere near as loud as, as I normally would in that mm-hmm. situation. So the stage monitors weren't as loud and everything was a lot more wow. controlled. And yeah, I mean, I haven't tried it with Tom Mike's going to um at least at a gig like this, but with the overhead, and it was cool having the ears too. The overhead captured everything I needed, and it was cool hearing, being able to hear exactly what was going out to the house. So, yeah. like, I could play it. Like, if I was like, noticed that maybe my cymbals were a bit louder than my toms, I would lay into my toms a little harder. Uh, that's cool. And I know that'll be how it's going to sound in the house. Yeah. So, you can kind of like balance your own levels huh. if you have a decent overhead. That's, I think I want to try, I need to get a new mixer, but, um, I think I want to try that. Um, can you do that with an interface and then mix it through your computer? That's a lot of work and a lot of setup. Yeah. That's a, I mean, be, but you mean, be easier you to mean get and like, then send it to the house. Yeah. No, you can't do that. Huh? I don't, I mean, there might be latency issues and uh, stuff like that. Okay, depends so on what you're doing, I think. The best way would be to get like a four channel mixer or five, or eight channel mixer or something and do like, if you have a four piece kit, no, nah, it wouldn't work. You need like an eight channel mixer so you can like, or do they make six channel mixers? I don't know, man. They I don't make know. mixers of all sorts of different setups. I mean, yeah, I mean, it depends on how many mics you want to run. I mean, my, this was just two mics. It was just a kick in my overhead. Yeah, was, that's so that's the simplest way to do it. Super easy. Huh. And, and if you, you can, don't have a, a wedge, you don't have to worry about feedback into your overhead. Yeah. So if you're, it's great for using in-ears because then you can, you know, you can hear everything and there's no feedback. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing it with, like, <laughs> without... um overhead then it's going to be a different story if you have like a snare and a kick that's all you're going to hear in your in-ears which brings me to my next thing so i played at the tin roof and i did i was like i'm going to do in-ears i was like i, I talked to the, i sent him messages in advance the sound guy and he's like cool let's try it and um you know it took a, it, t- it definitely took a minute to get things dialed in but that so that place they don't use an overhead it's just yeah. snare kick toms yeah no overhead though um but that place i usually feel like my leg's gonna fall off by the end of a because we play like three and a half hours straight oh my there, gosh and i feel like i can never hear my kick enough so i'm like hitting it as hard as i can all night yeah but this was this was fun it was different i was able to i could hear i mean i'm i'd probably tweak it again a little bit with him did you use an overhead there no really no but I could, but it was cool. I I could still hear everything okay, and I just like didn't have my ears very loud because you know you can still hear your if you don't. I don't use custom molded ones. Okay, so I can still hear some sound coming through. Oh man! So I could still hear my cymbals. It was like wearing hearing my cymbals with earplugs in, kind of. Oh yeah, but dude. A I little can... better because the the mics on the drums pick up the cymbals too. It's impossible for me <laughs> if if I don't have if I don't have a. Uh overhead when i'm wearing in-ears it's impossible like i can't hear my cymbals at all yeah well i don't know i mean maybe some of the other stage mics were picking it up too i don't know I mean, it's weird because they put mics on everything they've got a yeah. snare mics on the toms kick nothing I, for the cymbals i always said it would be better if they just took away the tom mics and used an overhead i think so too but then i yeah i mean it's kind of a boomy bright little corner that the drums are yeah. in so they might you might get feedback if if people are using a wedge i was thinking about this um i i recently just got new heads okay so phil and i have ranted and raving raved about the drums at tin roof on how bad they are <laughs> they're terrible <laughs> they're like they're it's a nice kit like 
it, on a decent, paper. Yeah, they're it's a decent. Yamaha kit. It should be good, but for yeah. some reason, there are some fools that go in there and just beat the crap out of these drums. Yeah, they get abused. <sighs> they still have the heads I bought. I bought used heads, lightly used heads, and put them on there like over a year ago, and it's still those same heads. Okay, so There's I was thinking Kit-Kat, about. But I was thinking about going in there today. I'm playing there tonight. Because I just got new heads on my drums and I took off all the all the Remo heads on my drums, tops and bottoms. And I was thinking about just putting my old heads on that kit. Do it. Because what am I going to do with them? They're just going to sit in my closet and then sooner or later I'm going to be drum flip with rows and rows of used heads. It's kind of like that at my house right now. So I think <laughs> I think it's a good idea because they're gonna they're used, but they're gonna be better than what's on there. And they're also mix match. That drives me nuts. They got like a 10 inch coated. Like, it's not coded. So then it's like an Evans EC2. Then they got like an Evans like <coughs> G2, not coded. And then they have like an Evans like or Remo or something like floor tom that's like yeah. a single ply. It's like I don't know what it is, but it's terrible. Yeah, it's well, terrible. I got the best ones I could find used. Well, it's fine. They no okay. When you put those on there, it was like okay, these all sound better than what was on here they were like horrible before yeah but i think they these will all be the same and it'll just it'll it'll be fine i was thinking about writing on them these drum heads have been provided by drum brigade <laughs> 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 but i don't know i'll just but gonna then, then do they'll it. start sounding horrible soon and then everyone's gonna hate us yeah that's true that's true so i think i'm gonna do it i'm gonna get there early and i'm gonna just straight replace all the heads on those drums do it tops and bottoms oh but one more thing okay. about that so it wasn't my ears weren't perfect but i think i'll tweak them but the cool thing is i you know because i play there a lot you play there a lot the one major benefit to me is that he can save my monitor mix in the oh. system and recall it every time. So as I tweak it and perfect it, I'll just have the same ear mix every yeah. time. It'll be it'll eventually be spot on, and I won't have to worry about it anymore. That's dope. So when we play there, like I'm, like I said, I'm playing there tonight. When I play there, your bass player is the one who is doing our sound. Yeah. And he is dope at doing sound. Okay, yeah. I Ryan there, Kilpatrick. Yes, I played it. I played there last week or la- last month, and I used the SPDSX for the first time, like first time for real on the gig. And it was he had it loud and proud. I can hear all the claps. I can hear all the backing tracks. I can hear everything. I didn't even need to use in ears. And normally, I have to use in ears for that stuff. And that was dope. But I had some like colossal fails, dude. Like I went like, okay, I'm going hard right now on a big 808. And it was like laser sounds. (laughs) It's like, I'm like, oh no, what did I do? And like the whole band is like, what the heck just happened? (laughs) And I have one of those like horns in there. Like I was hitting that. Yeah. I was hitting that like too many times. Like it was a lot of like stuff where I was just like, oh my gosh, dude, I got to tweak this thing. That one was the funniest one though. Like I wanted to end the song with just like, or like this break with just a big like boom, like big eight oh eight. Oh, and it was God. just the one hundred percent wrong sound, dude. Just <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. So it's like one of those breakdown moments where like everyone drops out. Yes, just like a, yeah, and, yeah. Oh, it should have. It was like <laughs> it was like. <laughs> like wrong 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 and all the singers were like oh my gosh what the heck just happened (laughs) um yeah so dude i'm like this is crazy it's december and like i'm still like pretty busy compared to like previous years normally i'm like dead right now just nothing and um it's been pretty busy like i've been like gigging like I have a gig every day this week. Dang. Uh, tonight, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know if I have one Friday, Saturday. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm like, it's pretty crazy. And it's been like that the last couple of weeks. But dude, like my Tuesday um, residency gig. So I'm on the way there to Tin Roof. And this is when I got my brand new snare. And I was just like. I'm going to get there early. I left my house. My gig isn't until 6. I left my house at 3.40 because I've been getting there like borderline late and sometimes actually late Uh oh. because the stinking traffic in San Diego is so bad right now. 
And so literally it's taken me like two hours, two and a half hours to get there sometimes. Um, so this time I'm like, I'm leaving super early, got there early, walked in, tuned my drums, set the drums up, blah, 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 donated. And for as long as I'm playing there, donated a throne to tin roof. I mean, not tin roof to, um, Eddie V's, uh, their throne sucks. It oh, keeps no. lowering on you when you're sitting on it. And it's like, it feels like it's impossible to raise it. Wait, like, is this the one downtown? Downtown. Okay. With all your might, you can like try to raise this throne up and it's just not working. And then when you sit on it, it like, like lowers really quick, you know? So I'm like, forget it. I'm, I wanted to do the same thing, write a thing. This throne has been donated by the drum brigade. <laughs> You know, but like I didn't. So um, I need to go back and throw a bunch of drum brigade stickers on there so people know it's mine and don't try to steal it. Uh, okay. I, anyways, I get there and, or I'm on the way. And then the, the singer is like, Hey man, I'm going to be late. Like, it's like the band leader. He's like, he's never late, but he's like, I'm going to be late. I had a family emergency. Uh-oh. So I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm like, are you sure we're going to play? Are you sure we're cool? And he's just like, yeah, no, we'll be fine. I'm on the way, but just just know that I'm going to be late. So if you know if you get there and and the bass player gets there, maybe you guys can just start playing some instrumentals or something. I'm like, okay, cool. So I show up, suited and booted, new throne in hand, new snare in hand, set everything up. They get there like he gets there like at least a half an hour late. He's like on and off the phone. He's like going outside. It's like, dude, I'm just like, dude, I just feels like you got something more important going on. Like, you know, and, and it's like, it's a, it's an emergency. It's like, they're, yeah, they shouldn't been there. They should not have been there. And I'm like, I just feel like we should not be here, dude. Like we should, you should have called in today. And he's just like, no, I'm really sorry, man. No, but it's all good. We're, we're, we're ready to start. And so we started like 45 minutes late, played three songs, just me and him, the bass player was on the phone, their, their family. And so the bass player comes in and he's just like, yeah, man, this is what's going on. And then the singer's phone rings and I just hear him going, okay, I'll be right there. And like hangs up No. and he's like, sorry guys, I got to go. Can you make sure they don't like, they put my stuff away and he like, cause he had a pack of his mic and everything. And then the bass player's like, I'll get your mic and stuff. We played three songs and he's just like, I got to go. And Dang. like tells the manager, sorry, we can't, we, we have to go. And the manager's like, no problem, no problem. Just go, go. And so he is like, didn't even say bye or like, really? He's just like, oh, he's, he said bye to us, but he's just like, that was it. I mean, and then, so I was just like frantically like, dude, what do I do? I'm like, I want to save the gig, but you know, I also want to be, you know, cool with them. Like, I don't, I'm not going to be like, Hey man, we had a deal, you know, <laughs> like, what, <laughs> yeah. what can you do? It's like, it's a, it's an emergency. Yeah. Emergencies. It happen. happens. Yeah. yeah. And so I was just like, yeah. Okay. So I, I called everybody to see if they can come and like fill in the gig and no one could, it was like, Hey, can you come down to Eddie V's right now? It's like, no, no one's going to be able to do that. And so we just packed up and left. Um, dang. So that was that man. I'm just like, okay, well, um, man, like this, it sucks that like, cause I know how much these guys love to play. Like they, they, they're, I've never heard them say anything. Like they've never been on a soapbox about anything like, yeah. and they were just like, for them to be like, we have to go was like, dude, we shouldn't even have been here. Like, this is no problem. They're just like, I'm sorry, man. And I'm like, no, don't even worry about me. Just go handle your family stuff. You know, your emergency. Yeah. And so that was that. Um, Man, I hope everything's okay. Yeah. So I don't know, and like, yeah, I got to check in with him. But um, that was a bummer. It was like it was more of a bummer for them, you know, because they they have not only like to leave the gig, but then they also have a family situation going on. So I was just like, you know, what can you do? This kind of thing happens, and it sucks. So I went home. That was that. Man. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. So we have. Like I said, there's no um, there's no guest this week. We do have a listener question. I do have a soapbox, uh, and then that's kind of it. Um, we have some like I thought I had like a new question for us. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I do got a new question for us. Uh oh. Um, 
And then that's it. More catching up, more um, tech talk, uh, and all that stuff. All right. So what do you want to get into first? Listener questions or soapbox? Oh, man. I don't know. You you choose. All right. Let's get into the listener question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. All right. So this week... Uh, we have another listener question from our old friend Dominic Jimenez. Yes. Yeah. He's uh, he's written in questions before. Um, he was, he's always got good questions. So um, yeah. So he sends an email um, using the contact form on drumbrigade.com. If you have a listener question, hit us up. I've had people ask me about my stomach problems. I've had people ask about drum related topics, technical questions, why I don't like pearl drums, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so if you have any question, use the contact form on drumbrigade.com or our personal websites, quarterkingston.com, philpardell.com, or send us an email at thedrumbrigade at gmail.com. Uh, send in your listener questions. Oh, yeah. All right. This one says, hey, young bloods. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, says, I just want to let you know that um, you guys are still doing a great job on the podcast. I look forward to listening every week. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Dominic. Uh, love hearing about the different products that you guys use, stories about gigs, Corey soapboxes, soapboxes, which are very relatable to me and some of my drumming experiences. Very entertaining podcast. Thanks, man. I didn't know anyone could relate to my uh, my uh, soapboxes. I feel like I'm offending somebody at any given moment, but whatever. <laughs> um, it says, I did have a question regarding the types of wood you guys prefer on your drums. Ooh, that's, that's deep. A, that's, hard. that's a hard one. As in which kinds, in your opinion, sound the best? Also, and also which dimensions you prefer on your drums. In particular, your bass drum size preference. Me and Phil disagree on this. Um, <laughs> Uh, he says, I know I've heard you guys say that 24s and, um, are kind of unnecessary and 26s are ridiculous. Anyway, sorry for the nerdy questions. Definitely not a nerdy question. This is a drum podcast. So, um, cool. Just want to know your opinion. Thanks guys, Dominic. All right. Um, once again, thanks Dominic for writing this in. Um, so what should we tackle first? Wood or sizes? Oh man. Um, I guess let's do wood first. Okay. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I <knew>. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> wood. Um, okay. So first, I guess we can just talk about what kind of wood our drums are made out of and then what other kinds of woods that we like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, um, you tell you, what kind of wood is your drums? First of all, I've just, my, all my drums are maple. All of them. Yeah. Well, except for the snares, but. Yeah, snare. So snares is a different subject. Like I yeah. don't have a preference on snares. Um, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm pulling up my my drum. I have a I have a like a I have a spreadsheet with like a list of all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is for insurance. Yeah, it's, okay. it's for insurance. Nice. But um, but yeah. So let me see here. Okay, so um, this mine mine are a little bit more technical. Uh, okay, so two different kinds of drums. So my drums are mostly mahogany, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my 10 inch, 12 inch, I think my 14 inch are all gum mahogany. Nice drums, gum mahogany. Um, it's like a blend. So there's yeah. like a ply of gum, like maple, and then a ply of mahogany and then, Sweet. Like, yeah, it's like a blend. Okay, so then my 16 inch and my 22 inch kick are gum rosewood. Ooh. And that's got a deeper tone to it. Fancy. Yeah. So, um, and you can hear the difference. Like, you can hear the difference when I play my, my floor top, my uh, 16 inch floor. So, like, I use the 12 and the 16 for like rock gigs. And then I use like the 10, 12, 14 for. What's your 14 made out of? 14 is gum and mahogany. Okay. Yeah. And then my. Floor tom, 14 inch floor tom is also a snare. Yeah. So it's like a 14 by 14, I think, snare. Um, okay. So those are gum rosewood 
And then the lower tones are gum mahogany. No, sorry. The lower tones are gum rosewood. And the higher tones are gum mahogany. I don't know anything about wood. That's just what Sai here wanted me to. He's like, this is what you want to go with. This is what I like. That was Sahir's prescription. Yeah, that was that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Like you just interview with Sahir, you talk to him about what tones you like. I, I talked to him about versatility on my drums. I want to be able to play a rock gig or a punk gig, and I want to be able to play a ska gig or a pop gig. So I want like on the pop gigs, I want my drums to sound real Dave Weckelish. <laughs> doom, 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 doom. You know, that kind of Tom thing. Um and I wanted them versatile. I want to be able to play a jazz gig. You know, I want to tune them up, play a jazz gig. I want to tune them super down and play like a dirty rock gig or a blues gig. Um, and so that's what it was. I feel like you should, you would like probably like a mahogany kit. I was like, yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, but maybe like a blend. And he's like, I think we should do like gum rosewood for like the lower tones. And then got mahogany for the higher tones. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm into that. I mean, I do have a kit, a different kit that's a blend of maple and mahogany. Yeah, yeah, I good stuff. About that. That's good. Yeah, I mean, maple and mahogany is a good combo, man. Mahogany is awesome. I like, lo- I yeah. really like mahogany. I like, I mean, just straight maple is super versatile too. Yeah, I've tried a lot of different woods. Well, from what I understand, ma- maple is like the most used wood because it's hard, right? Yeah, and it has good tone. It's, and so it's super versatile. A lot of drums and it's are made really, of that. it's available. So it's, you can get like, it's like, it's, you know, one of, of professional woods. It's kind of not, it's like the standard. You yeah. Know? I have like a, a eucalyptus tree wood drum set. Just kidding. <laughs> Just try to sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have played a eucalyptus. There's snare such drum. a thing. Yeah. Does it sound good? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Okay, I've played so, so many different weird woods. Dude, at this there's point, so dude. many different weird woods. Yeah, there's um lo- a lot of woods. Honestly, I can't really tell the difference. Yeah. Um, we still got to do that test between them. I know. I would love to do that between the different toms. Yeah. Different companies. Um, the other thing that people don't really realize is like how much of a difference your your heads, dude, make. Heads are huge, dude. I just changed my heads on my drums. Like, and my drum kit is a different, it's a different drum kit. Yeah. It's completely different because I've only used these same heads for the, since I got my drum. So I've gotten really used to the way my drums sound with those heads. And it's taken me like four gigs to be like, oh, now I love these drums again. (laughs) Like, it's so different though. I put new heads on and like, they're quieter. My drums are quieter because I, I mean, I, I was, they had, they came with Remo heads and like I play Aquarian heads. Were they single ply or double? They were double, I think. The Emperor? Emperor, yeah. Yeah. Um, and dude, I put these Aquarian response twos on and they're just like, it's a, t- it, well, I play force tens on the floor toms, lower tones, you know? Um, and it's like they're, they're like my 10 inch is like so different. Yeah. It's it's like quieter, it's warmer, it's like it's it's amazing how much my toms don't cut through as much but they have way better tone. So like if they were mic'd they would sound brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> I I do would I would like to um um try what you use the super super 2s? Yeah. I would like to try the super 2 on the 10. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, that's the one that's got like a five ply and a seven ply mill. Yeah, that's dude. That's such a good. I think that I love, might be I my love better the choice. Sound of that super ten, super two on the ten and the twelve might be the ticket because I like the way they sound, but I I haven't tried like a jazz setting or like a a ska setting on those, and I thought they would be more like a like an Evans G two or an Emperor, uh-huh. but they're not. They're more like a I don't know, like a darker. No, like a drier, like a rounder, quieter. <laughs> I, know, I told you, I don't know the technical stuff. They're not dry and they're not high pitch. But are they drippy? <laughs> so I want my, my high toms, I want my rack toms to be more like a higher tones like a, and clearer. These are a little bit more. It's like if you had a G2 or an Emperor, right? And you tuned them, but you had like a big moon gel on them. 
That's uh-huh. what my toms sound like. So I don't use any moon gels or muffling on my toms at all. Yeah. And they're like beautiful. So, but I feel like I made the right choice on the floor toms. I feel like I made the right choice on the rack toms for all the gigs that I play. But I would like to have a little bit more versatility as far as like high end pitches, higher, higher pitches. So I think, I feel like I'm good. I made the right choice, but I want to try the super twos. They're cool. I like them. All right. Anyways, back to woods. So back to wood. Um, I'm like, I feel like my drums have been made for me. Obviously they were, and they're like everything I could dream of. They're what I like. They're what I love. We all know you feel the same way. Funky Phil. Yep. I've heard your drums and I've played your drums and you have, first of all, you have a way of tuning my friend. You have a gift. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> you thanks. know how to tune drums. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, but you no, your drums sound really good. Really, really good. Um, and But now there's other drums that I've played that I love. Um, obviously, like you've heard me say that I'm a Yamaha guy. I love Yamahas. Yeah. I don't think there's any drums out there besides my Maples, Masters We're of Maples. We're talking about wood, though, not brands. I know. <laughs> well, I'm getting to that. Okay. I don't feel that there's any drums out there throughout the history of drums being made <laughs> that sound better than the original Yamaha Maple Customs. Really? Yes. Wow. Those That's I compare, a huge endorsement. I compare all drums to that drum set. Man. I don't know why they stopped making them. I know they make them Maple Custom Absolutes. I used to have those drums, but they're still not Maple Customs. Yeah. Why not make those again? Wait, what's the difference? They've got... I don't know what the difference is. The Maple go. Custom Absolutes were are their their version now, I guess. I had those drums. They were freaking awesome, man. <laughs> they were so good. Yamaha makes good drums, it's true. Oh. Yeah. Those Maple Customs were so, Maple Custom Absolutes. The Maple Customs are what like Dave Wecko plays. Um those drums are still, they were big in the 90s. I didn't really agree with the sizes most of the time, but those drums are magnificent. They're amazing. Clear, just clear, clean tones. I don't know if that's such a rock drum set, but it's a great drum set, man. Great drums. Those are one of the best drums I've ever played. The Akai, is it Akai drums? You know what I'm talking about? They make digital stuff, right? No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. Sakai. Sakai. Yeah. yeah. Sakai, um, also some of the best drums I've ever hit. Ever. That they're made by Yamaha. So Dang. there you go. Um, yeah. I mean, and uh, yeah. So, okay. Yamaha drums are like my thing. Like the Yamaha Oak Customs, amazing. The Yamaha Maple Customs, amazing. <laughs> the Oak Customs are really great. I When I was endorsed by Spawn... Um, they gave me a birch kit, uh-huh. um, used it on a tour. <laughs> Seriously. One of the best drum kits I've ever played. Amazing. Birch is cool. That's actually what the, uh, the tin roof kit is birch. I think. Oh, right? really? Oh yeah. yeah. Um, birch I take it back rad. then. Just kidding. Birch is rad. I personally, I like, I like maple over birch when, yeah. I, when I have the choice. Well, they were like explaining to me that the birch ones were good for, um, like studio stuff. Yeah, but m- not so much a live kit. Um, it's weird. I don't know what it is. I feel like the tone is rounder from a maple kit than a birch. Yeah. Like there's some. It feel whenever I play a birch kit, it feels like it's EQ'd weird. Well, I feel like also though we're like maybe more um, like we cater to maple too because that's what we're used to. Most drums are made out of maple. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, birch sounds fantastic. It's great wood. It's kind of. Um preference i guess so the as far as the sizes so like we said like the wood tones i mean i'm just not one of those guys like i'm just not one of those nerds that like like care so much about wood yeah (laughs) i should maybe (laughs) but like i just know that like 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 when sahir was just like hey this is what kind of sound are you going for what kind of drummers do you like what kind of music are you into getting to know me on a personal level and then was like, this is what you should play. This is what I think. What do you think about this? I was like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds great, man. Mahogany. That sounds like exotic. Yeah, let's do it. But then when I hit my drums, I was like, Oh yeah, this is me. Yeah, totally. Like totally exactly what I would want. Like as far as like 
when I buy a drum kit, I'm looking for versatility. So I want to be able to play a lot of different styles of gigs. Yeah. Tuned up, tuned hot. And kind of extremes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I want to be able to play a jazz gig where my toms are just super high, or I want to be able to play a rock gig where they're like finger tight. Yeah. You know, and like tuning range, tuning shell thickness is important too. Yeah. So I don't know how many plies mine are. The thinner the shell, the lower its fundamental will be. Yeah. So if you if you have a real thick shell, it's gonna wanna that'll resonate. Really, it'll be really nice for for um higher tunings. But the depth also matters That's for tuning range. What too. I was gonna say. Yeah. Um I tend to like shallower toms. Now not like you know how like in the like maybe like early two thousands, like it was like it was like the thing to have these super shallow toms. Like yeah. DW made like a bunch of drums that were like all like super shallow. Mm-hmm. And then like all these custom companies were doing it. Um, there it is. That's, yeah. that's not what I'm talking about. But I tend to like shallower toms. So they're not posting too many pictures about themselves. Just a, a good amount. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So I like... <laughs> My rack toms in particular. Yeah. Uh, okay. So my my kit is 10 by 7. Uh, 7 deep. I don't have a 7 inch tom. Like, yeah. 10 inch. 10 inches, 7 inches deep. Mm-hmm. My 12 is, I think, 8 inches deep. 14 is 14 inches. Like I said, like the deeper tones on my floor toms. And then my 16 is 16 by 14. Dang. So, and the 16 is beefy, dude. It's like a, man. You say 16 by 14? Yeah. Mm. Maybe it's 16 by 15. Well. Um, I think it, yeah, actually, maybe it's 15. I'm not really sure. And then my kick drum is 22 by 17. We got to get on a whole nother topic on kick drums. 17. Yeah, that's right. 17. That's big. Kick, six, six, 22 by 17. That's a big boy. It's pretty average to me. <laughs> I, I, had a, like, I, had a, I had a 22 by 20. That's ridiculous. It sounded great, though. Yeah, that's big. I actually still have it. Um, okay, so this is the thing, man. My, my spawn kit is acrylic. It's not even wood. And it has a like dual 45 bearing edge on it. So it's basically like a triangle, the bearing edge. edge. Yeah. Um, it's not offset in any way and it's basically the same size It's 12 by, it, I don't have a 10, but it's a 12 by, um, eight, I believe 12 by eight. Yeah. And then 14 by 14, 16 by 14. Okay. And that drum kit sounds amazing yeah. and it's not even wood. <laughs> it sounds so good. It's acrylic. It's acrylic. It's, I hate acrylic drums. You haven't played this kit. I'm telling you, because I was the same way. Like, I don't want it to sound plasticky. I want it to sound like well, I want it to have tone. What, what, is, what heads do you have on it? I have the same thing. I have the response twos on coded. Coded. Okay, I think that makes coded a difference. on the top and bottom. I think that makes a that probably makes a huge difference. Yes, because I feel like every time I have played. An acrylic cl- kit, everyone puts clear heads clear, because terrible. Like, I want to be able to see through everything. No. It sounds like beach balls. Yes. That's a perfect way it's of putting it. It's got these weird ringy like overtones and they yes. sound like compressed. Yeah. Like when you, if you've ever bounced a rubber ball, yes. that's what most acrylic drums sound like that's to me. That's exactly right. But it might just be because I've never played one with coated heads on it right so. so this thing is like it's a it's a super fantastic custom extreme custom like lame looking look at me drum kit okay it lights up phil <laughs> i went all out this is in the early 2000s all right bro just back off okay <laughs> um it's so ugly this kit it's too much but i'll never get rid of it it's just it's my it's like the guys that like, I don't want to even want to talk about it. It's just, it's a, it's a, it was cool for Warp Tour in 2008, but it's not really cool right now. 
I love this kit though. When I got it, it was like the most beautiful kit I've ever seen. It was so extreme. I think this kit would be dope if it didn't have the candy red like hardware. Ugh, it just threw up in my mouth a little bit. I want it to just be silver or maybe like like black, like not black. Um, what is it like? Sh like shark skin or something? Like <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. What? What's the what's the I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we're not talking about hardware. We're just talking about <laughs> drum tones and woods. The hardware makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> I wish these weren't anodized <laughs> candy red. It's so hideous. Damn. You uh, still have this? Yeah, it's in the closet right there. Are they for sale? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, they sound good, though, man. Yeah. They sound really good. Yeah. Uh, and so because it lights up, I didn't want clear heads on it. So they put single ply coated on the bottom, double okay. ply coated on the top. And it sounds great. Okay. Um, anyways, so that's what I'm saying. Heads make a big difference. Tuning makes a big difference. And then like the, the sizes kind of make a difference, but wood doesn't make that big of a difference to me. If yeah. you're in the studio, that's different. But then there's all kinds of tricks with like reverb and stuff that they do that, you know, I don't know, like Holgeen's, old kit that's in um designer drums the sonar ones the sonar ones that are into um that are in pacific beat in pacific beach um san diego those drums sound great man yeah those they are sound good. great mm -hmm. like they sound like the biggest giantest hugest like <laughs> recording kit you can ever have how big's the kick on that i think it's a 22 yeah i don't i don't the tom's really deep like mm. it's like an old kid. It's like a like a '90s kid, it's right? Deep tone. '80s kid, maybe. I hate sonar because they try to reinvent the wheel. Get over yourselves. <laughs> I don't want to use your custom key. I want to use a regular key. I don't think they do yeah. that anymore. I mean, the they're the one thing that's nice about their key is that you can, if you forget your key, which I don't know why you ever would, you can just use a screwdriver. You can use a coin. Oh yeah, I didn't think you about have some that. Change you can just tune your drums with a quarter. That's dumb, or dude. Something. But who who doesn't? Yeah, I mean, come on. If you're if you're out there playing gigs, you should have a friggin' their drum hardware, <laughs> dude. Get over yourselves with your hardware. But their drums sound good, man. You can't deny it. I dude, I like I like them. They make some they good, sound good stuff. Man. I really I saw Brian Blade play once in New York. Who's that? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and he was playing one of those like vintage sonar kits um like that's the different. 60s like oh my that's god different. it sounded so good dude no that's yeah yeah that's yeah you can't deny that okay well anyways what are your what are your dimensions i was i was like looking all over i can't remember exactly all my depths but yeah. um i have a 20 inch bass drum oh boy yeah uh-huh okay so do you want to get on this now 20 by 15 oh boy yeah <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, well, your toms are kind of similar to mine. I, I have a 10, 12, 14, 16. Yes, I had to talk I you into that 10, and I know you love it. You did, and I'm glad you did. Yes, good. I, I, yeah, it's, it, was a, it was the right choice to make. <laughs> and I've got, um, I think both my rack toms are seven inches deep, if I remember right. Okay. Um, so it's it kind of, I can't, to be honest, I kind of wish I got my 10 inch one, like maybe a little bit shallower. Yeah. Um, but I think they, they sound fantastic. And yeah. then I've got my both my floor toms. <laughs> <laughs> a little quick one. Both my floor toms are 13 inches deep. Wow. Yeah. Both of them? Both of them, yeah. Why? That's just what you wanted. Yeah. Wow. I, well, I liked the, because I played, because the one at the belly up is a 13 inch deep one, 16 okay. by 13. Wow. And that thing sounded so good. I was like, I just, I really like that one. Huh. See, but the thing is for me, I almost always use a 14 inch yeah. floor tom on like almost all my gigs, unless I'm playing like a rock gig, then I'll use a 16 inch. Yeah. But the 16 inch, I want it to be like, almost like if you heard my 16 inch, you'd be like, don't you want to tune it? I almost have it tuned like a gong drum. <laughs> like it's as low as you can get it. And it's just like a thump. That's funny. Like, so I wanted a big, deep, like floor tom yeah um well mine i mean it tunes real low still um it's just i don't know i guess the the depth also changes the response yeah like how quickly it yeah resonates and you know all that stuff but 
I don't know. And they, it looks really clean when in both your floor. If you if you're using two floor toms when they're both the same depth, it kind of looks cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my odor kit. It shouldn't even be in this like conversation, but it has the dumbest toms ever. I cannot. I've tried everything. I hate these toms, dude. It's like a ten by like four, five, and then oh, yeah. like and then like a f- the floor tom is a twelve by like six, I think. And you've got a fourteen inch <sighs> bass drum. Fourteen inch bass drum. Bass drum is killer. Huh. Love the bass drum. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. It's good. And then it comes with a snare too. It's like a dumb twelve inch snare. Like I actually like the snare too, though. Uh, yeah. The toms are like there's nothing I can do to make them sound good. They're hideous. Oh, you even after you put the new yeah, heads no, on, it's dumb. Still... They're terrible. They're yeah. terrible. They are more versatile now. Like I did a rehearsal with that kit and played like a rock rehearsal, and it was like, oh yeah, these sound cool. But like you can tune them lower now, and they sound okay. But they're just I just can't get them to sound good, man. I don't know what it is. So that they're super not, shallow. That's not really the most versatile no, size. No, Th- those like those shallow. That shallow of drums just sounds terrible. It might be the bottom head too, though. Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe I should. Uh, yeah, forget it. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. So depths are. Yeah, depths are what they are. My my depths were like for kind of for I don't know what the word is, but. Um, I was, I was, it was more, it was less about tone and more about setup. Like, yeah, I like my Tom, my rack Tom's pretty low. Me because, too. Yeah. So yeah. I don't want them scratching up my bass drum, which I've had that problem where you just cannot get your, your rack Tom in the right position because it's hitting the bass drum. I hate that. So I Dude, like, that's part of why I like twenties. Cause oh I'm boy. short. I'm like five feet shorter than Corey. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you're like normal height. I'm tall. Nah, I think I'm, I think I'm short. Okay. I'm pretty sure yeah, most people would be like, oh yeah, Phil, he's pretty short. We're extremes on both <laughs> ends of the spectrum. I'm very tall. You're very short. I mean, I can still play a 22, but the, <laughs> I thought you were going to say I could still play basketball with the best of them. <laughs> no, no, I definitely suck at basketball. I'm, bad. I'm terrible. I'm basketball. so bad. Me too. Uh, our promo picture is so funny, dude, because we did not try to hide the fact that like I'm really tall and you're very short. Yeah. And like I thought we were gonna like maybe try to you stand more forward and maybe in the background, or like maybe put you on like like you're standing on some put telephone on. books or something. <laughs> but no, it's just like no, we just went with it, and it looks like perfect. It looks like we photoshopped a giant next to like somebody that's very small. <laughs> It's super funny. Um, okay, so kick drums, Funky Phil. Kick drums. This is where we disagree so much. Now, you have a 20-inch. I love 20 I've inch. had a 20-inch before. Yeah. I like the way 20-inches sound. They sound great. Yeah. But I don't think they sound big enough for a big stage. And don't say because it's going to be mic'd. No, no, no. That doesn't apply. Yeah, it does. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Why does it not apply? <laughs> it still isn't. I mean, I guess I've played a 20 inch on a big stage and it, it, yeah, it's mic'd up, but we're talking about two inches here. Yeah. I prefer 22s. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you like tried to get technical for a second. And then you're like, I just prefer 22s. <laughs> yeah, I do. I prefer 22s. <laughs> 22 by 17 is mine. Yeah. 22 by 13. No, 22 by, what's your, no, 20 by what? 15. 15. Yeah. Wow, that's a shallow kick. It's not too shallow. That's not too shallow. I mean, I've got a, tw- I think my other, I've got a Slingerland with a 20 by 12 or 14. Oh, that's dope. I, it's awesome. That's dope. Now, I want that. I mean, I really li- like, I th- I really like, I mean, my vessel kick is is pretty well-rounded, I think. Like, the... The fifteen inch depth helps it hit lower notes, it's, but it's um, still it's still responsive and it's not too like boomy feeling. But it's it's like super. I mean, you've seen me play on that. It's yeah. it's punchy, like hits you in the stomach. I, I feel like it's like we're you like we just got on this conversation about me being really tall and you being really short. So yeah. I feel like when you're behind your kit, it's the same as me being behind my kit. It's like your size. Yeah. 
it's good. I'm a little guy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's um, you know, it's it's cool. I mean, I this is the thing too. Like if we're like at a shed or we're like I go into Guitar Center or something or something. I'm testing out drums. I kind of gravitate more towards the 20 inch. I'm like, oh, I want to play that one. Yeah, it seems like it's quicker and it's like it sounds like it's punchier and it, it sounds cooler. I like the punch. Yeah, and um, and for me, you know, this is just personally part of why I like 20s is they. I I like the tuning range. I like that I can tune it up for jazz gigs. All right, I I can have it like you know in the make it sound like an old school funk kick or yeah, I can I like, I, like I can tune it down if I've, if I've got a mic in it for like um pop gigs and it's totally the kills thing it. is that I'm saying though is like that's an ideal kit like I I I was gonna get a 20 like yeah. until when I when I was playing with spawn I was like yeah I want a 20 but and the same thing with like masters of maple I was like what do you think about a 20 inch kick and he's like I wouldn't go with that why well, he like he makes a lot of big kits, like yeah. massive like rock drums. But like I was kind of fighting him about it, but the thing is at the end of the day like for smaller rooms, I feel like a 20 is cool. Yeah. But for bigger rooms, I feel like 22 is more versatile and is going to give you that attack that you need. Yeah, maybe. in my opinion. Yeah. I think you are an absolute moron if you get one of those stupid Travis Barker like 20 by 20s or 22 by 22s. <laughs> like the cannons are the dumbest things ever. I made the mistake of getting a 22 by 20 and I was going to get 22 by 22 because it was popular at the time. That is the dumbest thing ever. They sound terrible. How do you even fit that in your car? <sighs> they sound... I, I remember there were so many different guys getting like like the opposite dimensions, like a 20 by 22, like super long cannon kick drum. Yeah, I don't like those. Dude, that sounds dumb. It I sounds like terrible. Them. But I mean, it, it really all depends on what kind of work you're doing. Cause no, I mean, there's no, there's no setting that sounds that, that sounds good in. Well, I just mean in general, like okay. for your kick drum preference, like, I don't know. I, a lot of guys were just getting those to sound like, to make it like custom, you know, like, I have a custom drum. Nobody has like this dimensions. Like I've seen guys with like 18 by like 20, like little tiny, but like super long. It's so terrible. Yeah. Um, I, I played... remember the first drum set I saw that had like a really long looking kick. Like yeah. that was the hip gig. You remember that? Mm. It was like this thing made by a Yamaha. Oh yes. And they, they like, all fit inside. Yeah. And they all yeah, mounted yeah, off dope. the kick. Yeah. I but want one of those. That thing sounded good, though. Yeah. That was like a little 16, but it was like real deep. Yeah. But it yeah. sounded, it, it worked for that. Like, okay. Okay. Well, I played the worst drums I ever played. These had to be the worst drums I ever played. Um, was in Canada, some custom Canadian company. And it was like a backline kit. kit and this dude was like a Travis Barker wannabe. Mm. Um, he had a 26 by like 24. It had to be 26 by 24. It was huge, ridiculous. That's bonkers. It was ridiculous. It was a giant kick drum. And then he had a 10 inch rack and like an, I, I want to say like a 16 or an 18 inch floor Tom. And that was his whole kit. And it was like just stupid colors and like, and I looked at it and I was like, okay, that seems dope. Big kick drum, like little rack Tom. That sounds cool. Dude, I played this kit and it was hideous. The kick drum was so <laughs> it was so bad, dude. It was so bad. Oh man. Well, all right. To get it to get specific, I like I do like 22s. Fine. I'm I personally would most of the time would prefer a 20 because of like I like the articulation and how punchy and quick and responsive it can be. Yes. And I like the tuning range. And it's great for my stature i'm shorter <laughs> so if i and i like i don't like having my toms up in the air like you know some 80s drummer yeah um i like to be able to get around the kit quickly and do different things so that i prefer the 20 but i do like 22s for certain things like if yeah. i was doing just like tons of pop gigs and that was it i might use more 22s like i kind of want to get a 22 yeah a shallow 22 though Ooh. i want to get yeah 
like a 22 by 14 or Ooh, something. That's crazy talk. That would be dope. It would kind of be dope though. I love those. Um, 24s. Uh, not, uh, I mean, they're not, they're not the worst thing in the world, but fine. it's not my preference. And I've played, I have played a gig with a 26 once. That's a, nuts. A 26 inch Pearl maple kit. I just threw up in my mouth from the eighties. It was like huge, terrible. And it was with, some band I was playing with at the time that was like they these dudes would bring out Marshall half stacks and like one of those refrigerators that bass players like yeah, to use. Yeah, yeah. And um and I wasn't mic'd up. <laughs> and this was the, I we would usually throw a mic in the kick, but this time I didn't even need a mic with that twenty six. I, I just, was like <sighs> I was like it, it was overpowering them. Yeah. I don't like the way that sounds. It's I real mean, John Bonham style, right? Yeah, it was yeah, huge. It's not my thing. But, you know, the trade-off was my tom had to be like above your head. Yeah, I had to like, yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. I played a 22 one time. This dude had it full of pillows. I'm not 22. A 26. Yeah. He had it full of pillows and I was like, "What in the world is this?" But it sounded really good. Yeah. But he had it really 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 muffled. Um 24s, I used to have a Yamaha Rock Tour custom <coughs> kit and it had a 24-inch kick. Mm-hmm. Um, love that it had a super kick two on it. It sounded so good. Best that, one of the best kick drums I've ever had. But the trade off was the toms. I yeah. hated not being able to put my toms where I wanted them. The to- toms are so important. I mean, you. Bottom line, you got to be comfortable behind the kit. Yeah, you want to be able to move around how you want to move around it. And I mean, if if you're uncomfortable playing it, then it's not worth it's not it worth to it. me. You know, the worst thing about that drum kit was that Yamaha Rock Tour Custom is it sounded great. It was like that was like my first real k- drum kit, but it had free floating r- floor toms. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, like those, like the rims the, mount thing? Like it, it mounts like a like a rack tom. Oh, it oh was yeah, I terrible. Hate that. I hate that. That is awful, dude. No. 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 Yeah. I was like, wh- why? Like every time I see a kick drum, I mean a, a floor tom that is floating like without floor tom legs, oh, I, I like kind of get mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so I thought you were talking about, because you know they have that like rims. No, 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 that, no, no, like, no. My battlefield like, had It makes those. Your, your floor tom legs like yeah. come out like four inches yeah, wider so, so dumb. it won't fit in any bag. Yes. I yeah, hate those. I hate those. My, my battlefield kit had those and it was just... I didn't, I didn't like that. <laughs> um, my battlefield kit, it was 20 by, I believe 20, 20 nice. by 20. Uh, it was 12 and 14. And that was my whole kit. <laughs> nice. And like, I liked that kit, but it was really poorly made. Really, really, really poorly made. It was like really? a hybrid acrylic, like maple and an acrylic in the middle. Whoa. And it was just, I think it was like the first one they ever tried to make. And it was just bad, like glue everywhere. Like, yeah, yeah it was bad. But it, it was like a cool idea. It was black sparkle with red acrylic. Um, I like the sizes, though. It was like a cute, fun little kit. I played that kit with Agrilites until nice. I got my spawn kit. Um, but anyways, kick drums. Uh, so I got this 22 by 17. It's perfect for me. It's yeah. perfect size. It's a perfect tone. I just put that super kick 10 on it and it is dope, Phil. Yeah. It's not your style though. I already know. No, why? No, it's too, it's too dead. Yeah. It's so dope for me though. That's it's awesome. not versatile. I need to take out the pillow and put a felt on the front kick drum head and see how that sounds. It uh, might be boomier and like might be dope. Um, so yeah, I want to try that, but I'm about to pull the trigger on ordering a kick drum from um, Masters of Maple. Now, this is where we're kind of disagreeing because I don't want to play this Odery kit anymore. I want to sell this thing off and get rid of it. You're getting I, a 16? I really want this, this kick drum. I don't want to get rid of this kick drum. I love the kick drum. This is what I love about the kick drum. I, 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 it's not my favorite thing on how it sounds because it's a 14-inch kick drum. That's tiny. It's tiny, but I put like basically a super kick two on it, basically. It's, it's something else. It's for marching band or something. And then I have a single ply on the, on the resonant side with a hole in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I have a muffler on that. And somehow I got it to sound pretty good. It's like really, really punchy. 
it's high pitched so it can it's it can play it on jazz gigs and it sounds good but then i can play like a funk tune and it sounds really good for a 14 inch it sounds good but i love being able to throw that bag in my car and using it on gigs when i have to play in like dual settings like i love how small and easy it is to load in and out of gigs like you mean when you have a reception where you need your full big kit and then you have but you have a cocktail hour elsewhere yes, so yes. you need a jazz kit yes so rather than drag your big old kick over yes. there and try to play jazz on a deep big old kick yeah i just use that use thing that. that's cool so i want to get another kick drum that sounds just like i mean that's that looks just like my actual drum kit what are you getting so i want to get I was like, should I get a 14 or a 16 or an 18 or a 20? Like, I don't know, but I want, I don't want it to be like I'm carrying another kick drum. Like I'm freaking Tommy Lee with two bass drums showing up to my gig. I want like a very (laughs) small cocktail hour kit, yeah, like a little kick drum, like a 14 inch. So I hear was like, I wouldn't go with anything lower than a 16. I would probably get a 18. I said, okay, well, if I get an 18, I don't want it to be an 18 by 16. I want it like 18 by 12 or 18 by 14. Yeah. He's like, I definitely wouldn't do that. I would get 18 by 16. I'm like, no. 18 <laughs> by 14 is the minimum I want to go. I want a shallow little tiny baby bass drum. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, we can do that. I'm like, okay, let's talk. So <laughs> we have to talk about it. I haven't done it, um, but I'm going to get an 18 I'm, I really want an 18 by 13, probably. Woo! Really shallow. Nice. Uh, and I don't know how it's going to sound, but he keeps saying it's going to sound like crap. But I want it to sound, I want it to sound high pitched and like a jazz drum kit, like a jazz kick drum. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I used to, dude, I had a, I, I can't remember how deep it was, but I used to have a 16 inch bass drum. Yeah. It was a Fibes. Oh, Remember those that are dope. I love yeah. Fives, dude. It was actually one of those. Love that company. Um, yeah, it was Maple. They it was like so. Gretsch used to make drums out of something called Jasper Maple shells, mm-hmm. which was like a real specific blend of I forget ma- maple and some other kind of wood. I don't know. <laughs> Nerds all over the place love it, but uh, <laughs> Fives bought all their old stock of that. So when Fives oh. was making drums out of that, so basically they sounded like 60s Gretsch drums. Oh, I love it. Um, Gosh, I wish Fives was still around. That is just, I loved everything they did. They, they made did all these dope drum. acrylic drums. Yeah, I had this mini kit. It was actually made for Nam. like, what year? It was a long time ago. But it, yeah, it had like a real 16-inch with wood hoop. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the other thing. If I do this 18 or 16 or 14, whatever, I want it to have wood hoops just like my other kit. I loved it, man. That thing, it sounded so good for jazz. And I can, I even, you can actually get a super kick in a 16, Mm -hmm. like a bona fide super kick. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I would put that on there for if I, if I had to play something else sometimes. I feel like if I do that, like if I get this kick drum built, I want it to have wood hoops and I want it. I want to put like a super kick one with like, like a a vintage on the front, maybe like the, so the vintage single ply with the the felt strip or with a felt strip and like run it. I bet that'll be like boomy, but punchy at the same time and versatile. And maybe I throw a pillow in there if it's like too boomy. Yeah. And I think that's going to be, and it's going to be like looking good. It's going to look just like my little kit, except like raised a little bit. And it's just going to, it's, I need this. I need this. I need to make this thing happen. I need to make this thing happen. I need to sell this odory kit first though. I've never had an 18 inch bass drum, but I've kind of always wanted one. I have one you can borrow if you want. It's, it's a, it's, it's has terrible heads on it though. It's just so, I don't know. The, the gap between a t- like I feel like a twenty can do anything that an eighteen can do, but more. Yeah, eighteens are difficult for me because I've I've had several eighteen inch kick drums and um, I can never really get them to sound good. But I also can never really I never like all the ones that I've had haven't been elevated, you know. Oh yeah. So they've been like on the floor, and then the the beater is like too short, you know, and yeah. Um. So I never really liked it, but I built, I had an 18 inch floor Tom with my, 
with my um, rock tour drum kit. And it was floating too, by the way, like mounted like a rack tom, I think. Oh no, that one had floor tom legs. Anyways, uh, I 18 inch floor tom. I didn't like it when I was a kid. I was like, why would you ever have that big of a floor tom? So I made a kick drum out of it. This was before you can just buy things on Amazon or musician's friend. So I literally ordered from Pearl. <laughs> yes. Uh, hoops, 18 inch bass drum hoops, 18 inch heads. I just got random heads. Like I didn't even look at what kind they were. And so they were just terrible, terrible, terrible heads, black heads. <laughs> and drilled out the the Yamaha um, legs like spurs, drilled them out and made them myself. I don't know how I did it. I didn't measure anything, so it's probably lopsided and stuff. <laughs> drilled them out, put that mug in there, and built my own 18-inch kick drum. Oh, yeah. And I still have it. It's in my backyard. <laughs> uh, all right, so... That's my take. That was kind of a long... That was a lot of tech talk. That was a lot of tech talk. And yeah. It was a long answer to your question, Dominic. I like... Sorry, I, f- I forgot to mention. I've played some drums made out of cherry. Oh, yeah. That was that's awesome. Good. Yeah, that's like, good. I feel like I would totally rock a cherry kit. I think that's what gum... Cherry? I don't know. No, cherry... I've played some Masters of Maple like that are gum, gum and cherry. Dude. Yeah. Beautiful. I like two years ago, three years ago, uh, Nam show saw here had Brazilian Rosewood kits, which is like illegal out here. <laughs> and it's like, you, you can't cut down that tree, but somehow he made it happen. Like, I know he didn't do it illegally, but he like probably paid a lot of money to get these, these are $10,000 kits. <sighs> and like <laughs> oh my those God. drums, dude. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> They, the thing that sucks is like I can have the most gorgeous kit and I know it's expensive, but if the sizes are wrong, I'm like, ah, I just wish this was a different size, you know, like, but yeah. those kits, like the four, floor toms was like, oh man, just beefy and good and clear. And like, they looked amazing. Never seen drums like that. Crazy dude. Same thing with, um, uh, uh, uh what's that guy's Rhett from, um, Hendrix drums. Oh, yeah. Oh, we should have Rhett on the show. He's a good dude. Yeah. Um, uh, Hendrix drums. This dude built some good drums, too. Those drums are rad, yeah. Yeah, and he, like, he was, like, he every time I'm at Nam, he's, like, hey, man, give it a whirl, like, test him out. You know, he can play, too, that dude. So I went around his toms, and I was, like, the rack toms are okay, but the floor toms, he had, like, a 14 and a 16-inch floor tom that I was just, like, dude, these floor toms sound good, man. And he's, like, yeah, man, they're, like, and I don't know what kind of wood they were or whatever, but I was just, like, I'm really blown away. Like, you know, when you hit the head and you can see it kind of bouncing, like it's like the sound is like the air is like bouncing off the bottom then bouncing off the top then bouncing off the bottom. And it's like, you can see it like vibrating. That's what the effect his Tom's had. Nice. But I was just like, wow, these sound really good. Those, those sound really good. So a lot of the custom companies I'm not really impressed with ever. Like yeah. no offense, but I'm just not like, I'm like, yeah, I get what you're doing here, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like cannabis, I'm always impressed by their drums. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, like sometimes, like, you know, sometimes some, some drums, you know, look good, like, and sound good too, but I'm just like, yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty good, but then there's every now and again, it's just my preference, you know, like when I went over to the Sakai booth in loud freaking Nam with everybody beating on the drums. I went around their toms and I was just like, Oh my God, it sounds so good. Yeah. You know? And so there's been Yamaha drums that I've hit and I'm like, eh, it's okay. And then there's somewhere I'm like, Oh, there's even been, believe it or not, Pearl, Pearl drums. I got a video of you playing some. I did at Nam. Oh man. And you loved it. No there's a sweet picture of Gene Hoglin in the background. <laughs> That was a little tiny baby kit. It was a little jazz I loved kit. it. I didn't even know who Gene Hoglin is. You're getting all jazzy. Sounds like somebody from the Lord of the Rings, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah. All right, Dominic, thanks for that question. Um, I hope we didn't ramble on too much. Um, I'm pretty sure you still like will never be able to make a decision based off of our opinion because we are all over the map. It's all on you. It's me. I'm always just like, you know, I like 24s, but I don't like 26s, but I do like 26s, <laughs> but I don't really like 26s. No, I didn't. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's all about preference. Yeah, it's all it's about what, what you physically want. you like, what kind of tone, like how deep. You want your drums on average. Yeah. What kind of versatility you what want out of them? What heads you're using? What heads? Yeah. Bro. I mean, wood. I feel like isn't that big of a deal. There's so many other things that change your yeah your tone more. I mean, I've played like olive kits and elm and yeah, you know, all sorts of weird exotic woods. But like personally, a good solid maple kit with yeah. you know with the right heads is all I need. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Doc Sweeney's drums are like, um, he prides himself on doing like, what is it? Stave or steam bent? He does both. Yeah. Um, so that's also like a really, like, it doesn't even really matter what wood dude, like, because they're steam bent, it's like a solid piece of wood. It's not like, like glued, um, uh, plies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of tone for me. It's a little bit too much sustain. So I'd have to like choose different heads, like maybe put a lot of dampeners on those toms. Oh really? Um, cause there's just too much, like his solid kits are just too much sustain. It's like the sound just continues and like you hit it huh. 10 minutes later. They're still like, it's still like, Doom. it's weird. <laughs> See, I, I feel like they, they have like a real focused tone. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like between stav or stave, and um, I kind of like stave more than steam bent shells. Yeah. From what I've when I've played them, like I feel like I feel well, like what's the difference. So stave is where they have like kind of like you, you've seen like a barrel, right? Yeah, where it's got those long oh, pieces yeah, of yeah. wood, oh, and then they bind yeah. them together. So they're basically vertical okay. chunks of wood, you know, glued together and then milled out. So they yeah, have really good for, you know, like for when you're tensioning top and bottom. It's like Congos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like Congos. <laughs> yeah. So that, and a steam bent is where they take like a, a, a one sheet of wood and, and they bend, bend it. it with steam. Yeah. Yeah. And the steam bent shells are what I'm talking about. The steam bent ones are the ones where I'm like, I get it. Less glue, more tone. Got it. But yeah, I feel like the, I don't know. Person, I mean, from when, when I've played them, like I feel like the steam bent ones have they're like almost drier. Yeah, like they've got like a real focused tone to them. And they're, they're definitely not, they're different. not like a ton of overtones. Yeah, and I felt like the like more stave shells, you can they get like more sustain mm -hmm. and overtones out of them. I, okay, I don't know. This is just my experience. Maybe I'm talking. What out was of my that butt, green but. green kit that he had in there that was like a solid? Um, that Steam was bent. that was elm i think yeah. yeah that kit i was like oh man i want to play it and it had like really cool sizes too elm is a cool that's a pretty versatile wood yeah. i think that i don't know but it feels like they could do a little better on their bearing edges um or maybe take some more care in their bearing edges i've seen him throw around shells in there in the office where i'm like oh dude like <laughs> uh careful careful bro careful like he's just setting it down and like i'm like dude it's like a bearing edge. Like it's very sensitive, but I mean, it doesn't change really their, their drums sound really good. It's definitely a unique sound. I've played their drums a lot and I've like taught on their drums a lot and it definitely sounds good. It's probably not my style, but, um, definitely has some real solid tone, really yeah. good tone. Um, but if so I'm yeah. totally honest, I just, I mean, ply drums are totally good for me. Ply. Yeah, me too. Like they do, they have great sound. They're really versatile. Yeah. And I'm not gonna, I'm not like constantly stressing about damaging something that's insanely expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that being said, I would love a steam bent snare drum. Those sound great, <laughs> dude. Those sound great, man. You want to like real yeah. jazz sound in snare drum? Oh yeah. They sound great, man. Um, yeah. So all right, that's been the listener question. Listener question, Dominic. Thanks again. Um, once again, everybody, you guys got listener questions. Send them in. We probably won't spend as much time as we did today, but this is like a good question that I can still be just like, well, you know. Uh -huh. Then there's these drums, and then there's those drums. Well, it's a good day for that. If we don't, we're not doing a guest today. So. Yeah, 
If you like go an inch deeper, it's going to sound exactly the same. If you tune it like this and you use this kind of head and blah, 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 blah. It's so crazy. I would love to do a live podcast uh, at Aquarian, just testing heads like crazy. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. We should do that. That'd be dope. Like, like aluminum snare drum day. <laughs> here's this head on it. And here's this head on it. And here's this head on it. Yeah. We could probably do that. Um, all right. Let's close out this segment and get on to something else. Dominic, thanks again. Drum, 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 drum Brigade Podcast. It's a good question, that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. We got, we really got, we dorked out hard. We got, we got dorky on that one, but. We didn't even touch on hoops, though. Oh my gosh. That makes such a difference, thing. too. You know what, dude? On that, um, that acrylic kit, my dream was always to have wood hoops on that kit. Mm. And really make it look like classy with modern. I Ooh. wanted to redo that kit so bad with wood hoops. And then I want to do gold hardware. Uh, oh, gosh. Blah. I'm glad I didn't make that mistake. Blah. But now I would love to do wood hoops on that kit, top and bottom. Um, vintage looking wood hoops. Like not the Yamaha wood block hoops. Mm. And not the SJC like butcher hoops. Those are terrible. You mean like bass drum style? Like, bass drum style like hoops. Claw. Yes. Like what's that company? A Yacht. Remember them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those, oh, yeah. Those sounded are, good. Those are dope. Yeah. Um, so that was part of the reason why I left Spawn too, because I was like, hit him up about redoing that kit because it, it's just been toured. Like I toured that kit out so much. So it's all scratched up. Like the, the hardware is like chipping and stuff. And so I was like, I kind of want to warm this kit up and make it look more versatile. And because I've been playing a lot of different gigs now. So I would like to do like wood hoops all the way around and change out the hardware. And they were like, yeah, it's going to be about $1,200. And I was like, that is crazy. I would rather just order another kit. And I was like, I thought I had an endorsement with you guys. Maybe you can do a little bit better than that. That's crazy. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, no. And so I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about ordering a new kit. And they were like, yeah, it's going to be really expensive. And I was like, I think I'm going to move. I think I'm done with yeah, you guys. Yeah, I think I'm huh? done. Because like, if I'm going to pay that much, I'd rather play what I want. Yeah. And like, no offense. I loved spawn when I was playing them. They're great drums, man. They are, they, they, they really are great drums for being like, being like a Keller shell company. <laughs> they're like really well-made stuff. They make their own lugs. Mm. Uh, their craftsmanship is top notch, dude. They like, they really do a good job. Nice. They were way better when Dave Pimentel was there. I'm opening up a freaking book right now. Yeah. You really <laughs> Diving um, deep. Yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> I'm not gonna talk crap about them. They were great. They're they're like there's no denying how good their drums are. Their drums are really fantastic. Never played them. Well, you're missing out because they're good stuff. Let's really? get it. I, I want to get your beach balls out and play on them sometime. All right. Yeah. We can <laughs> we can probably get the 12 inch rack out today. <laughs> um yeah, they were they were great. They were a great company, man. Like I was really good. I would love to have Dave on the show. Um, Dave no longer works at spawn, but he was like an equal 50, 50 partner. Um, okay. not going to, I don't know what happened with them, why they split, but you know, I've seen some things. That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, and like, it's funny cause it didn't end well with me and spawn. Um, which I, you know, it was just, it was just, I'll have to get into that on one of our episodes, but it was just, um, wasn't a fit for me anymore. They weren't giving me the support that I needed for touring. Um, I was just, yeah, it was just really weird. And like their image, like when I, basically I was going through a transition period where I was, I was not playing with the bands that I was originally playing with when I signed on with them. And so I was trying to change my like image. Like I was kind of trying to market myself a little differently. And, um, it was not a fit dude. Like I'm not a rock and roll guy. Like, you know, edges, flames, girls and G strings. That's not my thing. <laughs> And so that's what their whole company was like. Every ad was like either a girl in G strings or a guy on a Harley or like, dude, yeah, I ride a Vespa I, and I'm into ska music, you know? I remember that era. It was very, but the thing yeah. is, it still is that era with them. They're still like making flame drums and like edges, like cool metal, like, you know, industrial looking edges. And like what did it dude, what did it for me was like, I went on their, I was like going through the, like, I don't know if this is a fit for me blues, you know? And I was like looking at their 
MySpace, I think at the time. Yes, MySpace. And, uh, or maybe their Facebook. And I was just like looking at their artists and I'm like, am I, am I one of these guys? Like, I'm not one of these guys, dude. Like, you know, and then I was like, flames? Like, oh man, I hate flame drums. <laughs> I'm like, dude, more power to you. If you got flames on your drums and you wear a flame bowling shirt, that's cool, man. That's good. You do your thing, but that's not me. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So, and then I like look at one of their ads and they're like, get a spawn snare drum. And it was like a girl like bending over with a G string, like hitting the snare, a flamed out snare. Oh. And I was like, oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Deal. Now listen, I love G strings, girls, booties, yeah okay i'm a man okay <laughs> but dude i don't know man that's not the marketing angle that i'm trying yeah. to play up dude, i'm looking at their artists right now i'm probably still on there just kidding oh that'd be amazing i was hoping i'm hoping i'll find you on here no the guy that plays for agrilates now plays their drums no good for him that's funny funny that's a whole nother soapbox <laughs> oh wait we didn't get you sir <laughs> I ain't trying to hear that right now. Let's talk about this guy. Uh oh. Is this actually what your soapbox was no. going to be about? Okay. I have three soapboxes. Three? Yeah. This dude is a cool guy. He's a pretty good drummer. Cool. Um, he's. He's he came highly recommended from me to that band. That's always cool. He got an endorsement with Spawn Drums, kind of because of me. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'm dude. I, this is a touchy one. This is a touchy one. I'm sorry, I brought it up. Uh, this kid is good, man. He's a cool guy. We used to get along really well. We still do. Like he just saw me, and you know it was very cool. But he's changed a lot. Uh. Changed a little, I guess. Um, and I'm not going to talk crap on him. There's all there's already a sore subject with the Agrolites, um, anyways. As far as their drummers go, they've had a lot of different drummers, but I don't know, man. I don't know this. Yeah, I'm not getting on it. <laughs> Forget it. This is the first. This is the first time. This is the first time I've ever like wanted to get on a soapbox, but I can't. There's no easy way to get on that soapbox. Get on it. Well, you said you had three, so that yeah, you have two more to go. Yeah, <laughs> that one was just about that. Like, I'll just briefly tell you that, like, when you see the Agrolites, my beef is not necessarily with him. He's doing his job. Okay. Um. He fits right in, but the thing that's frustrating to me that's really annoying is that he's playing my licks. Like, he's he hasn't made that gig his own. Mm. He's playing my stuff, and he's playing Scott Abel's stuff. And he's not doing it his way. Mm. And two, like, that gig kind of got handed to him, dude. I remember when he was, like, a kid, and he was, like, a fan of ours, and he was in the front row watching us. And this is not his fault. Like, I'm the one that was like, hey, man, you're the guy. I've seen you play. You can play. You're the dude. Like, and he took it by the horns and rose to the occasion and did a great job. He does a great job with that gig. But then he got like, he got in the band when they were like at their peak of doing good stuff. So he got handed a really good gig. He got handled, handed an endorsement that I was the one that was like vouching for him and going, hey, Brian Spawn this guy's going to be the new guy at, at, you know, with the Agrolites and you should, you should give him an endorsement. And they did. He has a spawn kit now. Uh, he was taking less. He took a few lessons from me. Like, but then like, I've heard through the grapevine that like people go, Hey man, I heard you were a student of Corey's and you got like this gig. And then he's like, nah, dude, it wasn't like that. Like I'm not a student of Corey's. And I was like, that was kind of the deal. Like, you know, like, you're getting this gig, you're getting this endorsement, you're getting your, your first tour was like on a freaking bus with these, with these guys, but you're not given any credit where credit's due, bro. And that's not cool. Yeah. You didn't pay really any dues. You've paid a lot of dues now, you know, because he's toured like crazy with a, like a band that's not really like they're relevant, but not like they used to be. But that's all I was trying to say. Yeah. Not, it's not personally to him. It's just that's how they roll. It's probably not even thought of that, like, 
hey man, I got this opportunity from a dude who's actually like out there doing this. And like, why are you going to like diss me like that, bro? Like, and be like, uh, no, I never took lessons from Corey. I mean, we hung out, but like, bro, come Mm -hmm. on. If I didn't go, Hey, this is the guy. If you want a guy that's going to fill my position and do it right. Like if I didn't say that, it would be some Joe Schmo in there, like playing drums, you know? Mm, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not cool with that. That's mm-mm. no. Yeah. That's it. Uh, so I mean, but like I said, he's a good drummer. He's like, he's a good dude. He's like, he can play too, but I, uh, this is the mean part. I don't think there's any originality in there. Like there's just my licks and Scott Abel's licks. And that is part of the music. But like when I play in Hepcat, I'm playing a lot of Scott Abel's licks, but I'm playing them like me. I'm not playing them like Scott. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. All right. That's my soapbox. (laughs) I ain't trying to hear that right now. I can say that in that band. I feel like I'm freaking arrogant right now, but I can say that in that band because I helped start that band. Uh Uh-oh. Are we getting into another one? Might as well. Dang. (laughs) Four. It's number two. I ain't trying to hear that right now. <laughs> I have some beef with that that band because I feel like throughout the history of that band, like I've played in a lot of bands. Like I don't have beef with Sharp Shock because I left that band on my own accord and I feel like that band is doing it without me, but they have a drummer that's not trying to be me. He's him. Yeah. Right? Uh and Sharp Shock is cool. They're cool guys, man. There is no beef. Like there isn't like I, I didn't leave, like, maybe they thought I left on bad terms, but I just wanted to slip away. I'm not going after them for any money or anything like that. It's not like that with us. Sharp Shock is cool. And they're doing their thing with or without me, and that's what I wanted. Agrolytes is the same way. The problem with Agrolytes is that I'm being written out of history, and the guys that have played and started this freaking band have been written out of the history of this band. People in people that like the Agrolites now would never know that me and Jay Bonner and Brian Dixon were even in the band, but we were the guys that were like the Agrolites. Yeah. Um, my opinion. Okay. Like granted, like the guys that are in it now. Okay. Like Roger and Jesse are like, they're good guys and I know them too. And they're cool and whatever, whatever, whatever. But this is my platform. And I, that's why I have this, my podcast because they just released our first album again or they're going to re-release it. Um, they're going to release like a coffee table book about it. I'm supposed to be talking to this record label guy that just keeps pretending like he can't get a hold of me. Um, and I'm like, dude, I want to tell the real story of what happened in this freaking band, dude. Like, how am I, how am I opening? My band is opening for you guys. And you know, the, the history is water under the bridge. Now history is history, but like, I don't like, people not knowing about the legacy that I've left in this band. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've spent like nine or 10 years of my life touring like most of the year with this band to help it get to the point that it's at now. And they're not, they're trying to leave you out of the, it's like, we're not even mentioned. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, I'm sure I'm mentioned. You can't deny like the pictures and the show footage and all that stuff. That's I'll be there. But like, there's a lot of the story that isn't there. Like why I left the band like why I left the band um, in the first place and why I couldn't record on the self-titled album because I had my leg in a cast with 12 screws in it. Like, and I could have recorded that album left footed, but they were like, absolutely not no way. Um, When I wanted to take time off to get married, the singer, basically the singer was getting married, took time off to go on his honeymoon. The band was like, no problem. Like six months later, I was like, guys, I got engaged. I'm getting married. Here's the date. Me and Summer were getting married, and I was like, I want to, I need some time off to go. I can't do this tour because of my honeymoon. And they were like, Absolutely not. It's either your wedding or the, the band. What? And I was like, My wedding. And they're like, All right, we're getting another drummer. And I was like, All right. <laughs> so I was like, Well, why is it cool for the singer to take off time for the wedding and not for me? And it was like, so that tells me that like I was, they were like trying to get rid of me, maybe. I don't know. So That's I was crazy. like, All right, forget it. I'm out. So I, bounced out. And then um, two weeks after my wedding, two weeks after my honeymoon, I should say, I got in a motorcycle crash and broke my ankle. 
So I was like ready to come back and do the next album and tour it out. But I was in the hospital for like two weeks and recovering for months on end. So I couldn't record the next album. So Scott recorded the next album, toured it out until my leg was healed up. And then I came in and did the next tour. And I was, that's when my whole pill thing started where I was like on pills and like trying to get through my shows because my ankle was still like a beach ball and very, very, very sore. And, but I still did it, made it happen. Then we recorded, recorded reggae hit LA. Um, and then, you know, Jay like left, which was the bass player, original member, the dude who really like him and Brian are the guys who really put this thing together. Um, and yeah. And then when Jay left, it was like the management started taking control and started making us like tour when we like on stupid nonsense tours where we should have been headlining over the bands we were touring with. And it was like, a just a, it started turning into a mess. And so I was like, I'm not down with this. I'm out. And that's when I left for real. And I was like, I'm not coming back. And I was already starting to record on the next album. So I recorded like five tunes for their four album. And I, I was cut out of history from that point forth. That's crazy. And like from that point be back, I had toured and toured and toured and toured and toured and toured. I would see my wife for like four days, two weeks and be kissing her hello and then kissing her goodbye because I'd be back on a plane flying out somewhere to go tour. Dang. And that's what I don't like is now some kid comes in, which I really liked. I, like I said, I recommended him. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is the guy. Trust me. I know the guy that's going to be right for your band. I know what this job takes. You need a young kid that's not concerned about money and not concerned about like being home with his wife. He just wants to get out there and tour with one of his favorite bands. And that's what this dude was. And he's been in the band ever since. He, like he had a little hiatus, but he's been in the band ever since. And that's great. That's why I recommended him. But yeah. like, don't be one of those dudes that is like, hey, like I just hoped for a little bit more of like, dude, but what about Corey? You know, like he's the dude that like I'm mimicking here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not like, I'm not trying. I wish, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm bitter. Like, cause they've asked me to come back and like do gigs and stuff. And I'm just like, absolutely no way. There's no a chance. Yeah. Um, that, that ship has sailed. It's, it's part of my history, but I would be taking a huge step back. Um, and so that's, that's that. Like I just, my bitterness comes from like, dude, this is something that I started with like a few other guys. There's five original members. And then there's guys that, that, like I think I have it bad, but there's guys that were like on the first album that really developed that sound that were the real players that are not even mentioned. The other guys are taking credit for their playing. That's some stuff, dude. We'll get into, I yeah, think when this up. book is released, I have to get on like a real agri-light topic and have these people tell, like know the truth about this band. Cause like, it's not all bad. I mean, some of the best times of my life were in that band. Like, but I just feel like it's funny. I think it's funny that like the way things go down, how, you know, I'm, I mean, you know, I feel like if there's any, a play, any, anywhere to like talk about this reasonably and like share my side of the story is on my platform that I built, which is this podcast. Yeah. And if you don't like it, then don't freaking listen to my podcast. Cause this is my soapbox. Yeah. All right. If you like the Agrolites, good for you, man. I like the Agrolites too. That's why I played in that band and helped start it. That music was music that we all grew up listening to and played in different bands. So feast. <laughs> all right. That's soapbox number two. Dang. I ain't trying to hear yeah. that right Agri now. I never even dreamed I'd be on an Agrolite soapbox right now. Not Let's talk about down. Sharp Shock. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sharp Shock is dope. Um, <laughs> all right. My real soapbox of the day, man. I'm sorry, but um, I have to get on this one. It's the end of the year. You need I another part right Jeez. It's the end of the year. It's the last podcast of the year. So I'm just trying to get all these out before I, you know, next when like as soon as January hits, we're like all positive. Like, man, it's going to be a good year. Like, you know, no soapboxes. I'm yeah, that's a lie. I'll probably have some soapboxes. Who am I kidding? This soapbox is about a dude. Uh oh. I'm not going to mention names. If you think it's about you, it's not. All right? <laughs> Don't be that vain. Okay? 
It's about you me. know that song, You're So Vain. You probably think the song is about you. Uh-huh. That, the funny thing about that song is it is about him. <laughs> no one thinks about that. It is about him. <laughs> you probably think the song is about you. It is about you. All right, that's not what the so is much about. <laughs> no. Uh, this guy. Okay, so this guy is just in general. I get hit up so often. This is like actually kind of related to my soapbox last, last episode or maybe the episode before the bass player who always asks how much I'm making on that gig. Oh yeah. Okay. Well that's happened again. Not the same guy. This happens all the time. People stop asking me that. Gosh. Hold on. Let me get my drop. Wait. Uh, first of all, why are you asking me that? (laughs) Gosh, gosh, shut up. (laughs) All right. So, uh, I get like an, uh, like, remember how I'm always telling you guys how to like check out my, um, YouTube page, watch my like day in the life videos, all that stuff. My vlog that I'm so proud of that nobody watches anyways. Um, no, this, so I posted a new one of this day of when I went to the Aquarian thing and I had another regular, like my, 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 residency gig somebody comments on it hey man love your videos whatever i don't know specifically what he said but he was like hey how much do these gigs pay (laughs) what (laughs) and so i'm like yo bro uh it's super i go so before i answer your question let me ask you how much do you get paid on your job how much do you get paid at your job and like i think i was like do you get paid by the hour or do you get paid by the like you know, job or like this fool just replies like no, no questions. Just like, yeah, I get paid like a hundred to 150 a gig. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro. Like I start laughing. Like, like I was kidding. I don't, I'm that's like incredibly I, inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm just not really like interested. I don't, I mean, good for you, you know, but I'm not really trying to like, and so I said, I, I wasn't really expecting a response. I was just trying to say that like, you know, or he's like, do you, do you make a living doing this? Or do you have another job? How much do you get paid on your jobs? Like on your gigs? And so I asked that question and then he responds and then I'm like, wow. Well, I said, I wasn't really like, that was like kind of a rhetorical question. Like, but I'll just say that like, I exclusively play music. I don't do anything else. Like I don't have a construction job or anything. Like I just play gigs and teach and do sessions. And that's all I do for work. That's my only job. Yeah. And I said, but that being said, I'm not really comfortable like talking bank statements with people I don't really know. So stop asking me that question. Like, why are you asking me how much I make? That's rude. Yeah. That's so weird. I don't, why do <sighs> I thought everyone knew that. I, f- I feel like, uh, like one of my friends is like married to like a, like a European girl. And he's just like, I just don't understand why like people from our culture are so like weird about talking about what they make. He's like, people from other cultures don't care. And I'm just like, well, I find it extremely rude. I don't want to discuss that with you. And besides that, anytime you ask that you can say any number, it always is returned with a negative response. Well, that's it. That's all you make. Or like, Oh, well dude, at my job, I make, you know, it's like, so why, why are you asking me that? Yeah. I've had so many people go, man, how, like, is it really worth it? Like what you make, like, how do you make a living? Like, what do you get paid? And then I tell them and they're like, dude, how do you make it? Like, man. And I'm like, dude, don't ask me that question. Then I make it work. Yeah. I'm I'm not here to like get your approval moron. Go like ask somebody else. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) Makes me so mad when stop asking that. Yeah. It's a pretty rude question. I think. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. Like, and besides it's, first of all, it's none of your business. Second of all, it varies. You know, there's gigs where I make like a lot and there's gigs where I make a little. And like the, the key to it is like, I live a simple life. Like I don't live in a giant house that like is downtown with like a Butler. I live in like an apartment. And like, I made that decision when I was doing flooring and I was in construction in a job that I absolutely hated. I was like, I work really hard at this job and I work five days, sometimes six days a week. 
And like, I'm killing myself and I'm miserable. I hate doing this job. So I was like, if I work as hard as I do at this and simplify a little bit, I maybe can do what I want to do. And that's the sacrifice. Yeah. You're trading wealth for happiness. Yeah. Like I made good money and I could buy toys and I had dirt bikes, which I broke my ankle doing, you know, but I also played gigs when I was doing that job. So I was like, I really love playing drums. What can I sacrifice to do that exclusively? Mm-hmm. It's been a long road ahead, but that's what we do. There's jobs where it sucks. There's jobs where maybe you have to do some side work. There was a time where I had to do side work. Like I had to do carpet repairs along with being a full-time musician. Mm-hmm. There's days where like, there's times when you come home from a tour and you're like, great, I don't have any work. What do I do? You have to get a job somewhere before you can start picking up work again. There's all kinds of that stuff that goes on. It's across the board, but dude, how did you get your job and how do you make it work with your job? You make it work. That's it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So like, don't ask me that. Just ask, like, stop asking people that (laughs) too. (laughs) I can't even believe, like, if you're at the doctor and he's, like, t- like checking your ear and, like, can you cough for me and, like, can you breathe in, take a breath? Oh, before you do that, Doc, I just wanted to say, like, <laughs> how many patients do you have and how much do you get paid a year? Like, how much do you get paid with your, like, like would you, you ask that? Like, do you get paid per patient or, yeah. like, per hour yeah. or is it just a salary or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I would never do that to any, I would never no. dream of asking anybody, like, I would search it, how much does drummers make? online on average how much should a gig pay i don't know but i mean i get i get i don't think this guy was coming at me like maliciously or like he was just coming at me like with a genuine question yeah he wasn't being mean he wasn't like he was just like genuinely asking me hey man how much do your gigs pay but of course me being me i was like bro how dare you (laughs) and like i was just like it's just just not an appropriate question for me man you gotta ask somebody else yeah Um, now granted it's partially my fault because I am putting it out there. Like I'm putting it out there like, Hey, here's a day in my life here. You know, you're coming with me on my gig and like, you're going to the artist party as for one of the companies I endorse. And so granted people are going to ask questions like that. So I didn't like block them or anything, but I just kind of responded in a very like Corey soapbox way. (laughs) I'm not interested in discussing my bank statements with you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's just not a, I don't. It's like, not cool. I feel like that's never really appropriate to ask someone. No, no matter what their line of work is. But I feel like there's a, like an extra level of insecurity yeah. and instability and in being your own. You know, running your own business, which is what we do. You know, you're, right? You you are your own business, right? And that there's a certain you know there's a ebb and flow of, right. of business, and it's. It's not always, you're not, it's not always popping off. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's, it's pretty, you know, thin. Sometimes you, you go weeks with, with minimal work. Right. And that's stressful. Yeah. But I mean, I feel like that can be like anybody. Like I know a lot of construction dudes that are like low on work right now. They're just like kicking it and like, you know, you, you like for me, I like try to like, prepare for the slow season. You know, the holiday season is normally very slow for us. Yeah. And so, um, it is what it is, man. But like, I still don't want to discuss with you how much a gig, like I, I have like a lot of like Filipino friends and that's like really big for their culture. Like, Oh, how much, how much did like, if you get a new car, Oh cool. How much are your payments? You know? And it's like, for American culture, I feel like that's like something we wouldn't ask. Like, or maybe you, maybe that's like borderline, Like, did you get a good deal on this? Like, you know, what are the payments like? Or like, but like, I've had some of my friends go, man, this is really cool that you're playing this. How much does this gig pay? And then like, I feel bad, like, well, it's part of their culture, but it's not part of mine. So maybe I should compromise. And then I tell them, they're like, what? That's it? And you're like, bro, why did I tell you? Like, it's, it's, I I don't think I I get paid. I can't get around it. It's a really odd thing. It's like asking someone what their financial comfort is currently. It's never how, how comfortable are you financially right now? How right. is your life? How are you doing with your finances? And it's also <laughs> like it's a fine line because if you're like, oh, I get paid five grand for this gig, they're gonna be like, bro, like you're rich, you know? Like, and but if if you're like, I get 50 bucks, they're just like, what? You know, so it's like you can't, you can't really there's not a number. Like, I feel like people that aren't musicians think that you make tons of money 
playing music. Like, mm-hmm. but man, it's just, dude, it's like, and it's, I can't, I can't express to people like how much this is like a normal job, even though people think I'm just at, when I'm playing a gig, I'm at a party. You know, it's like, this is like a very normal job for a lot of people. It's different in a lot of ways, but we're working, you get paid for your work. You have to put things into perspective. Like when I was doing carpet, it was like, okay, well they just spent this much on the carpet and then they just spent this much for the installation, but nobody's spending like $20,000 to get new flooring in. It's like, what would you pay to get new carpet in your house? You don't, it's like, it's, it it balances out, you know, it's like, it's, it's, no one's getting rich off of being a carpet installer. Yeah. So no one's getting rich. Like, I know you think the music industry, everybody is Beyonce, but it's not like that. Like I'm a, I'm a working, like, I'm kind of like a blue collar musician, you know, I'm just working like on every angle I can to make a living as a drummer. So that means I play gigs. That means I teach lessons. That means I do studio sessions. That means I tour, you know, that means I do vlogs and have a podcast. That means I'm, I have all my hands in all different avenues to try to make a living at what I do. Yeah. And like, that's as as simple as it gets. So if you think, if you see me playing at a bar and you're like, okay, well, how much would it be for a bar to handle? How, first of all, how much is this bar making tonight? You know, if there's, a hundred people in there and they're drinking, you know, and like all that stuff, do the math, dude. I'm not making freaking hundreds of thousands of dollars on this gig. Yeah. You know, and some gigs are better than others. Corporate events are better than like bar gigs, you know, wedding gigs are, are better than like bar gigs. You know, like if I'm playing a cheap, like showcase gig that I'm not getting paid very well, but I'm receiving five gigs out of that, that do pay well, that's an investment that I'll make for my business. Mm -hmm. If you have to go and bid five jobs and you get a few jobs out of that, you're willing to make that investment. Right? So that's what it is. It's like, dude, just, I'm not getting rich off of playing drums. I'm making a living, an honest living off of what I do. It is kind of funny how people look at the music industry as like, like if, it's like if you're not famous, yeah. you're not successful, right? Or you're not you're not a real musician or something. Yeah, man. People have such a misconception of what being a musician is. It's I've really had bizarre. so many people like when they go like like you're at the bank or something, and they're like, they're like, um, so how's it going? Like, oh, good. So what do you got going on today? Oh, just working. Oh, what do you do for work? Oh, I'm a a professional musician or drummer. <gasps> Are you famous? I'm like, no, just a musician. Live in Oceanside. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you play with anybody I know? I don't know, man. Have you heard of the Schmucky Metals band? Like, <laughs> it's like no. Like, I mean, maybe, but like, it's not as it's not what you think. It's just I'm just a drummer, man. I'm just a drummer. I'm just a drummer. Like, yeah, I just I know it's I know it's weird. It's bizarre, dude. Talk to my wife for like five minutes. You'll see. My wife is like, could care less. She's just like, yeah, I've seen you play. It's all good. Oh, I like that band. I don't really like that band that you play with. It doesn't matter. It's like, proud of me? Yeah, okay, that's cool. But at the end of the day, I can come home from the biggest tour I've ever done. At the end of the day, it's like, all right, cool, babe. Welcome home. Um, I'm going to need you to do the dishes, and I need you to throw out the trash, and um, the cats need kitty litter, all right? All right, <laughs> see, I got to go. I'm like, <laughs> dude. Yeah, so that's it. All right. Soapbox number three. I ain't trying to hear. Stop that asking right now. me that. <laughs> stop. At, if you think it's cool to ask people how much they make, just stop. Yeah. Go up to a police officer or a fireman and be like, "Hey, man, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. You're really great at what you do. How much do you guys make? <laughs> See what happens, <laughs> sir. Turn around. <laughs> if you're black, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I have one more, Phil. Oh man. We've been going on a long time, but I have one more. This is the end of the year. <laughs> Dang, okay. Get them all out. I ain't trying to hear that right this now. This soapbox is in behalf of... Is that, is that a word? This, this soapbox is shared in behalf of somebody else. Okay. This isn't my soapbox. I've been on a soapbox about this subject. Huh. And I've talked about this person. I played a gig with the one and only. She has a voice of an angel. She's one of my good friends. 
Everybody loves her. Her name is Rebecca Jade. Woo! Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Yes. Rebecca Jade. She's dope, dude. She is so dope. She is. Dude, I freaking love Rebecca, man. Insanely nice, too. Dude, she's the most professional singer I have ever worked with. She's awesome. Like, I've done studio sessions with her. She's like a freaking one take. She's like a one take girl. Yeah. Sings her parts, can sing the harmonies, do all that stuff. One take. Mm. She's crazy, man. She's crazy. She's like hardworking. She's going all over the world. She's playing, she's singing with Sheila E. She's killer, man. She's great. I love working with Rebecca. She's so dope. She's a great hang, too. Like, super funny. Um, that's why she's working. She's a hard worker. She's a really, really gifted singer. I'm really, really like, I, I'm talking very well about her. She's really great. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing, nobody, I've never heard anybody that says anything bad about her. No, it's Funniest true. thing, dude, happens. So she has this thing, man. If you see Rebecca, she has a giant afro. Huge. And she has this thing, man. I, don't, I never tell her. I didn't tell her that I was doing the soapbox, but I witnessed it in front of my own eyes, and it was hilarious. Someone wanted to touch it. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, so I'm like, I'm like, we do this gig. It's like a kind of an intimate setting, you know, like like everybody's seated, like a smaller like kind of thing, and she's singing, she's killing it, right? And then the gig ends and I see these like kind of mid middle aged, like white ladies in the front. <laughs> like, oh, no. And they're like, you can tell they're a little, like they're kind of cougarish, like <laughs> older though, like in their sixties. <laughs> okay. And they're like, you could tell they're just, they're tossing back the wine, like the whole time they're there. Oh yeah. And they're kind of like, they're those type of women. Okay. 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 They're like, they're dressed nice. They're drinking wine. They're there to have a good time. And they're just, they're just stars in their eyes the whole time they're watching Rebecca. Yeah. Loving it, loving it. And so I'm like cut to like the end of the gig. Like, well, she's singing any song she sings. They're just like, Oh my gosh. And they're just loving it. They're singing along. All right. So gigs over I'm packing up my stuff, going, I'm wheeling my cart out saying goodbye to Rebecca and her husband. Just like, man, great to see you guys. She's like, Oh man, so great playing with you. And we're cracking jokes and, you know, talking and like we always do. It's just laughing, having fun. So these two ladies are standing on the side and they're, they're like those type of ladies. They butt in. I just have to tell you, sweetheart, you are, you are the real deal. You are just so wonderful. Oh my Lord. And then the other one comes up. Oh my gosh. And your hair. I've just wanted to touch your hair the whole night. And like, while she's saying, I want to touch your hair, she's touching her hair. No. And Rebecca is doing the like neck jerk where she's just like, Oh boy. Oh, and I'm, my social no. anxiety is like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm <laughs> saying oh boy out loud. <laughs> Rebecca's like, oh, and she's just and no. like, it's, yeah. The, Straight up went up and touched her hair. Yeah. She's she like, I, I, by the way, how much do you get paid? Oh my <laughs> God. She might as well have. She's like, I've just wanted to touch your hair all night. It's just so beautiful. And oh, man, you're such a doll. And like, it was so like kind of condescending. It was kind of like, I just got a bad vibe from the whole thing, dude. Yeah. It was just so, they were giving a compliment, but it was so much of like a, a like, oh my dear, look at you. You're so cute. Like she's a little girl. Oh. It was like, you're, you're pretty good for a uh, like little girl or like colored girl. I don't know. <laughs> it was like, that's the vibe I got. And they weren't trying to be mean. They weren't trying to be racist and nothing like that. It's just the vibe, dude. Yeah. And then she, so she goes, uh, I've wanted to touch your hair all night. It's so beautiful. And Rebecca's doing the neck jerk and she's like, can I touch it? Like, no, can't like, like kind of like, what are you doing? Like, like let me you, touch my hair. You're moving away from yeah, my like, hand. Let me <laughs> exactly. Like, let me touch <laughs> I, your hair. I can't reach it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. And like, so re she goes, can I hold, well, wait, can I touch your hair? Like, and Rebecca's like, no, like, like very like sweet and friendly. Like, no, please don't touch my hair. You know? And she's kind of like laughing. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Over in the corner. <laughs> I can't help myself. Wheeling I'm feeling so awkward. Yeah. Like, just like, <laughs> oh, oh boy. boy, let me just wheel my drums. Oh boy. And like, <laughs> 
<laughs> and like it was so uh, it was so awkward dude it was so awkward because oh, rebecca is just like she knows that like i've had i've dealt with the same thing yes you've been on a soapbox I've been about on that a soapbox. for yourself yes yeah. yes guys like people that is incredibly like degrading and so incredibly rude. rude it is incredibly rude to do that that is so, yeah it's so weird i've had people that is so like it is so borderline like racist kind of to be like what does your hair feel like yeah i know that's that's not should, maybe it's not racist you should start just going up to white ladies with like <laughs> with like long like nicely straightened blonde yeah. hair and be, be like, like what does it feel look like at your hair can i just touch yeah, it and run that's your what i mean through it <laughs> yes okay if you turn the tables you see how weird that is <laughs> And I'm not like this day and age, man, you can't really like, I feel bad. Like I'm not pulling the race card. Like it's, it's, but it's dude, come on. I mean, it, it's, I feel like it's absolutely something unique to yes. that hair type. I f- I've had, I cannot tell you how many people have wanted to touch my hair to see what it feels like. Yeah. And then go, wow, it feels like cotton or it feels like wool. Oh, that is so rude, dude. Yeah. And that's what was happening before my eyes. Yeah. With Rebecca, dude. <laughs> I feel like I've seen it happen with any like people with any any type, any skin color that has a like really curly, curly yeah. fro type hair. Yeah. I feel like it happens, but obviously like way more. <laughs> dude, when I had my like big old like like early Bob Marley dreads kind of fro oh yeah dreads too people yeah. do that with dreads dude, too right so incredibly rude it's so incredibly rude and and like i had so i had so many girls like intrigued though like in a like pickup kind of way like oh my gosh your hair is so cute can i feel it oh my gosh and i'm like nope can you please get your freaking dirty disgusting hands out of my hair like that is so weird and like so that was happening before like Dude, Rebecca's hair is naturally beautiful, okay? But it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of, like, I don't know what she does to her hair, but I'm sure it's, like, it, there's, you know, stuff in her hair, like, like I don't know, whatever, mousse, coconut oil. I don't know, but there's, it's, it's not just, it's naturally like that, but it, her hair was done. It was not, like, just, like, ta-da, I'm yeah. here. It's, like, her hair was nice and done and manicured and like you know that's just and so to have somebody's greasy fingers in your hair (laughs) is not cool (laughs) and then just touching it to be like what does it feel like it's i granted like people are like if it was like a pillow people be like oh my gosh it's so fluffy and like i love petting my cat because he's fluffy and like maybe my cat is offended like yo bro quit touching me (laughs) like yeah man that's so funny like i didn't ask to be here like stop touching my hair but that's, that's why I got him. You're it's here really for one bizarre. thing. My cat is, I got my cat for one purpose, to be a cuddle bug. A cuddle bug. <laughs> he doesn't hunt. He just sleeps all day. So when I want to cuddle, you cuddle. Oh, man. Um, Maybe you should start like when someone comes up to you and is like, can I touch your hair? You'd be like, yeah, but can I just touch your face? <laughs> I just want, and just a bit like reach out and yeah. start touching their face before they answer. It should just be like, yeah, you can touch my hair if I can touch your boobs. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this, is really, going there. <laughs> this is really inappropriate, right? <laughs> so don't ask me that. <laughs> don't ask me that. That's really rude. And that's really like really, really, really rude. <laughs> it's like totally rude. <laughs> that's the only way I could say it. It's obnoxious and it's very ignorant and rude. Yeah. Stop saying that. Like, and so Gosh. I know Rebecca, Rebecca didn't really like ask me to do this, this pod. I mean, this uh, soapbox, but you I just felt the need because I walked out and I was, I oh had boy. to leave. I was, oh boy. oh boy. And oh boy. And oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Whenever I'm doing that, I'm at my like limit of awkwardness. <laughs> And I was just, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, like just <laughs> scooting my way on out of there. Excuse me, pardon me, oh, excuse me. Like they were like trying to like kind of go out the door at the same time, and I'm just, oh boy, excuse me, pardon me, uh, pardon me, ladies, have a good night. Like <laughs> so weird, making sure my hat's on tight so they're not trying to touch oh, my God, hair. God, they're gonna get me next. <laughs> And like, I think Rebecca could like sense my like my like awkwardness, and so I get in my car, load my drums, and I send her a text. I'm like, hey, I forgot to ask you something, and I'm like. 
I waited a minute and I'm like, um, I needed to come back in and ask you, um, can I just touch your hair real quick? <laughs> She's just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. She's like, you wouldn't believe how often that happens to me, like almost on the daily. Oh my I'm just gosh, like, dude. I feel so bad for her. Like the way she reacts to it is so funny because she's so like hardcore, like, no, please don't, no. But she's still like doing it with a smile. Like she's so used to it. Like, no, 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 no. And that would be me going, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. All right. So that's my soapbox for Miss Rebecca J. I ain't trying to hear that right now. And that's all four soapboxes of the day. You know, don't watch me too carefully, all right? I'm still working on it myself. Man, wow, you got a lot off your chest today. Dude, it's been, that's what happens when we take a week off. Just think <laughs> about New Year's. I'm probably going to have tons. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You yeah. got a New Year's gig? I don't. What? Yeah. Dang, like counting down with year, the fam. First year in a long time. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe something will pop up. But Man. as of now, I'm just going to be <clears throat> chilling out and taking it easy. I have a one the night before. Oh, that's Which good. is, it's kind of cool. I'm kind of excited about it, actually. Yeah, I used to say no to all my New Year's gigs, and I just can't. I got a cruise that I'm doing. Nice. Um, it's like a four-day cruise. Woo. Phil, I'm going to be honest with you. Huh. I might jump off the wagon. You mean you're going to drink? Yeah. Oh. I might. I might. Uh, I've been good. I haven't, I've been, I haven't had a drink in one couple weeks now i gotta say that like i haven't had drink for like three months um there's days where i flat out don't miss it and then there's days where i'm like oh man i really want a beer yeah um i really thoroughly enjoy not drinking on gigs though but i'm gonna be on a boat with nothing to do with a bunch of teeny boppers and i'm not using that as an excuse i just kind of i think i'm gonna like not go hardcore and be like i am straight edge but I'm just going to be like, maybe special occasions, like I'm on a cruise, I'm in, Mex- I'm in Mexico, I might have a few beers. Um, I'm on vacation, I definitely want to have a blue drink in Hawaii, like if I go on vacation, you a know? A blue drink? Yeah, that's what you do. Like a, a blue lagoon or something? I don't know anything about Hawaii. <sighs> Phil, you haven't there. gone to Hawaii? No, dude. I just need to make enough money so we can do the Drum Brigade Hawaiian Experience. <sighs> be rad dude can we set up on a volcano <laughs> play drums on a volcano phil i want to play drums next to some lava you have to go huh. to hawaii let's go when your kid is big enough you have to go let's get on the drum brigade jet okay let's do it Sick. if we can get any sponsors for the show we can go to hawaii yeah we just need sponsors <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> this has been episode 24 of the drum brigade podcast Thank you for listening. Hold on, people. Gosh. We got the rest of the year off. We're going to come at you in full effect next year before NAM Show. We're going to gear up for NAM Show. We're going to take NAM Show by storm. Yeah. Get those interviews. Yeah. We're going to have a web show starting next year. So good. Drum Brigade Podcast. Thank you guys so much. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you for listening. Dominic, thank you for your... uh, Question. Woo. Rebecca, thanks for the soapbox. Oh, yeah. Hope yeah. you feel. Thanks yeah. for such a yeah. wonderful year. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for producing the show. Thanks to everyone. Thanks to all of our guests. Thanks to the drum world. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Drum Brigade Podcast. Oh.